Sports. The Orioles are massing on a hot Sunday afternoon in Arlington, Texas. Today it's the Orioles and the Texas Rangers in the finale of this four game weekend series. And hi everyone, I'm Jim Hunter. Thanks so much for joining us. For the Orioles, this road trip got off to a pretty good start as they split two games in New York against the playoff-bound Yankees. But since arriving here in Arlington, Texas, it has been another story. The Orioles ran into the hottest team in baseball. Texas has scored 102 runs since the All-Star break, more than any team in the major leagues, and they have kept that going in this series. You look at the numbers in this weekend series, Texas has won all three games. They've out-hit the Orioles. They've out-hit by a long shot with runners in scoring position they've outscored the Orioles 31 to 12 and for a team like the Orioles built on the home run Texas is out homer the Orioles the starters ERA a big discrepancy and the bullpen ERA as well and Jim Palmer Texas barring a page from the Orioles it's all about the long ball a couple of big rallies in the first two games but last night they won three to one all three runs on a couple of homers yeah and uh, you know was, yesterday was actually a very playable game uh, you know Bundy pitches well he gives up what would have been a solo home run into six innings except uh, Nunez made an error and then it became a two run home run. So he leaves two to one and then, uh, you know, Bird gives up a solo home run to Ordora that's got room service home runs. Anytime he <laughs> wants to hit one, you know, he hits a, you know, grand slam uh, two nights ago. So he's red hot and it, and the Rangers are red hot. So again, they've been outplayed in all phases of the game. And you're just hoping that uh, Jeffrey Ramirez uh, pitches as well as he's capable. He pitched very well against him early. Got the great change up to kind of do it. But again, the, you know, the Orioles play well in New York because they had that first big inning in that uh, game two of the Yankees where they got five runs. So maybe they can do that a, a little bit early against Drew Hutchinson, who they haven't seen for years, uh, right. you know, because he wore him out early in his career with the Jays. Uh, and then they hit him pretty well, and he's back uh, wearing uh, a Rangers uh, uniform. And as Jim mentioned, it does fall on the shoulders of the rookie Jeffrey Ramirez to be the stopper and the challenge of now facing a team for the second time. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, I think the the pitch count for Jeffrey is about, you know, almost 17 to 18 pitches per, per inning, mainly because, you know, he's got a real good changeup. He's got a good fastball command, a little different issue. Slider, I was talking to Caleb Joseph. He said, boy, I caught him when he was in the minors and I was in the minors for that brief time. But the slider, it wasn't very good in the minors at, at the big league level. They tightened it up, so he's got three pitches. He pitched pretty well with one one pitch, and that was the uh, Andujar home run uh, in the fifth inning. Got behind him, so maybe he can stay out of those hitters counts, uh, give him a chance to win. I mean, it's a hot afternoon, but you know he's used to it. So again, this is a young, this is the future. Uh, of the Orioles when you look at young starters and uh, they got him for international money from the Yankees as they did with uh, Paul Fry. So a couple of acquisitions last year not going down to Latin America but using that money and it's paid off. So, but he's got a pretty good idea and I think he has a good chance to be a good young pitcher. Yeah, and I think what is most impressive about Jeffrey Ramirez in the short time we've been around him he's always the same. Nothing <laughs> seems to bother him and that's a good way to go into a game today where the Orioles need a win. Yeah, And the other thing is you know one of the assistants who actually travel with the Orioles is Ramon Martinez and he's from the Dominican as is uh, Jeffrey and he can calm him down and I think the one thing that Ramon's been trying to get him to do is just stay in your windup. You got a good enough fastball your change up plays it makes that fastball at 93 or 94 seem harder and then you know again if you do that and you don't have the big innings which is what that fifth inning about the three run home run did him in in his last game you're going to be in ball games. I mean he, first time he ever pitched in Yankee Stadium former Yankee did a nice job. Maybe do a better job this afternoon here in uh, Dallas. So today the finale of the four game series before the birds head on to Tampa. It's the Orioles and Rangers from Arlington Texas lineups and first pitch are coming up.
nothing to hide. That's transparency. Well, another lovely day, another warm day in Arlington, Texas. Game time temperature brought to you by BGE Home. We know more, we do more. 95 degrees with a slight breeze, that humidity on the rise up to 37%, and we have mostly sunny skies in Arlington, Texas. Let's get a look at the Orioles Southwest Airlines starting lineup presented by Southwest. Low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Jace Peterson gets a start in left field. Tim Beckham in the number two spot. Tim's bat has come on. You see hits in 10 of the 14 games since the All-Star break. VR Trumbo Valencia with Mancini at first base again today. Nunez, Rickard, and wins for the O's. And as we mentioned in the opening, Drew Hutch, Hutch, Hutchison, uh, he comes, uh, well, he started with the Phillies this year and then uh, went over to the Dodgers, was pitching in a triple A, had an opt out, and uh, went four and one pitch real well. So, four seam slider, that's an important pitch because, you know, he's not overpowering. I mean, 91 with good stuff, got a change up. So, again, that's this season out of the bullpen for the Phillies. Actually, did a pretty good job. Had one bad outing against the, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals. So, again, a guy that early on in his career, you'd go, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's getting this out. And then they would score him a ton of runs. And then later on, we'll show you some numbers, a little bit more of a struggle. But a, uh, you know, a guy, what, 31 and 20, 22 in the major leagues with an ERA a little bit under five runs a game. So that's high, but again, only 27 years old. So Texas, uh, they are rebuilding as well and looking for quality arms. And here's Peterson swinging at the first pitch. And he is on with the lead off single. So Chase Peterson wasting no time, and he's on. Here in the first. Yeah, take a look at the defense for the Rangers. Calhoun Robinson. We get Drew Robinson in center, and then Chu, who played the first two nights, DHing and playing right. He's back and right. Profar made the end of the game last night with a great play. Beltry getting the day off. Andres Odor, red hot. Guzman. And uh, Torinos doing the catch and hit a home run on Friday night. There is the heating up Tim Beckham. See the batting average is up to 235. And ever since uh, the Orioles got here to Texas with Jonathan VR joined the team Tim has been moved to the number two spot today with Adam Jones getting a day off the yards going to bat third look at this bunt. so far throws off balance and he got him what a play by so far well you would think that Adrian Beltry uh, with his even though he's 39 uh, with his five gold gloves is playing third so the line drive to end the game and it's a pretty good bunt. but against the anticipation. You know, scouting reports tell you he'll bunt. We've seen him fake a bunt uh, early on. And uh, we mentioned uh, over the course of this four game series for Profar, you're Jeff Bannister. Can he play third? Can he play short? Andrews has an opt out, but he makes a great play. Now, you, I don't know if they'll give him a sacrifice, but they probably will because he got the runner over. But that was a bunt for a base. Yeah. So here is Jonathan VR who bats third today with Adam Jones getting a day off. Fastballs upstairs, 1 and 0. And again, he's probably going to max out at 90, 91. You know, mostly four seam fastballs. We are last night took an 0 for 4. He had multi hit games in his first two games with the Orioles. So he comes in today 357 with the O's five out of 14. Well he keeps hitting ground balls up the middle and nobody plays there. So Andrus not only holding Peterson with good speed at second but also a little bit more up the middle. Yeah Drew Hutchison is never going to be a stuff guy. It's a matter of you know staying out of these counts. You know what pitch to both sides of the plate. How do you do that. Well you got to be ahead. And I'm sure that's why he's traveled over the last couple of years, even though he's got a winning record, lifetime in the big leagues. Good cut there on 3 0, 3 1. Well, drafted by the Blue Jays 15th round back in 2009. And the Blue Jays eventually would trade him to the Pirates. And that was in August of 2016. And uh, that's where things began to turn for him as he bounced around. He signed with the Phillies in February, was let go, signed with the Dodgers June 16th. And then opted out, and here he is. In fact, he just signed his contract today. He had the opt out. He was doing well. Uh, as you mentioned, the Rangers you know, were looking for starting pitchers. We saw Harado pitch uh, earlier in this series, only 22 years old. You know, we saw last night Mike Marner was a terrific three year deal, so he's certainly penciled in, or he's in all kinds of ink. And there's the curveball, and didn't go. 
So the check swing call goes VR's way, and here comes Mark Trumbo, who last night reached a career milestone with his 1,000th career hit. And on top of it, it drove in a run. Yeah, I mean, a really good swing. Good pitch by Miner. You kind of uh, reduce that, negate it by the, the approach inside out. Drove in the first run, home run, two run home run on Thursday night. So there are the numbers with, with the Angels and the Arizona and the Seattle. And then uh, comes over to the Orioles in 2016, leads the major leagues in home runs with four to seven. Got First away with that. Swinging yeah. pops it foul. What was that a hanger? Just foul on the Rangers dugout. Yeah, sometimes you hang them just a little bit out of the hitting zone. And certainly, if you go back and if you if you look at that swing, that was a that was one of those uh, three-run home run swings. I mean, it was certainly a pitch to do it with. Well, Trumbo last night became the 37th different player to pick up his 1,000th career hit wearing an Orioles uniform. Now that doesn't mean all 1,000 hits with the Orioles, just wearing the uniform when you picked up your 1,000th hit. 37th since the franchise moved to Baltimore in 1954. So that actually is a, a small number and shows you how difficult it is to accumulate that many hits. A little cut fastball, or either that, a fastball that has just outside movement. So, Mark, uh, not a lot of at bats against Hutchison, but two for four of an RBI strikeout. Actually, no strikeouts. That's a good thing because that's what he's looking for here. That or a double play ball. A lot of room in that left center gap. With Hutchison ahead 0 2. Our Statcast AI powered by AWS, and there's the infield, so they're playing pretty much straight up. And the ground ball percentages where Trumbo hits them on the ground in the infield. So well, we pencil slider because that's a pitch that comes into play right here. And it's a double play, strikeout pitch. Changeup. Well, he's got them all, and apparently he's going to use them all. What you liked about that stat cast, Jim, is the highest percentage for Mark was right, right up the middle. Well, you go back, and of course, his best year from a home run standpoint, 47. That's 2016, but he got four hits opening day that day here. And three of them were to right field. But you were mentioning last night, I mean, this is one of these guys that works very hard at his craft. Loved to hit home runs, but also liked to drive the ball up the middle somewhere. Line drive and there's a base hit for Trumbo to center field. Peterson will be sent. Here's the throw home from Robinson. It is up the line. Throw back behind Trumbo and now they have him in a rundown. Who are they going to go after? They have VR between second and third and VR is going to be tagged out as Trumbo occupies second oh. base. And now Trumbo yeah. going back to first. And VR that's a smart yeah. thing because he's faster. So if one was going to be in scoring position VR said you go I'll stay here. Yeah, and what happened, of course, Strumbo thinks that because Drew Robinson arrow mails everybody, doesn't hit the cutoff, man, that Villar is going to get a read on that. Of course, the play's behind him, and he's going to go to third. So not only can he get the RBI, which gives the Orioles the lead, and this is a blown away slider. So right here, Villar, he doesn't read the throw. I mean, the throw's in the air, probably could have gotten the third. There's Torino's nice play, immediately sees that. Now they're going to run him down. So, I mean, you just keep going, keep going, keep going. And what he says, go because hey, I do have better speed. Great point, Jim. But so the run comes in. Trumbo's retired two down. Here's Valencia. Yeah, on paper, that is not a good base running play, but I think the anticipation, because again, if you're Mark Trumbo, you know Millar had 62 steals a couple of years ago leading the National League. Just figured he'd go to third. He didn't. Yeah, the replay we saw there, VR seemed content just to get to second. Yeah, and then again, you have to imagine he's coming into second. The the throw is actually back over his right shoulder, so he does not see the throw. It's very hard to go to second base, turn around because of the timing, and see the throw offline or you know missing entirely the cutoff man. One one is lined right to the shortstop Andrews, and that'll do it. So Valencia right on the nose. But he hits it right at Andrew. So let's get a run. We head to the bottom of the first. Jeffrey Ramirez takes the mound.
Here comes Texas in the bottom of the first and the Rangers lineup with Sin Su Chu leading off Rugnet Odor. Orioles are having a hard time getting him out. Not only five for nine, but three home runs and eight RBIs. And he has scored six runs in the first three games in this series. Andrews, Profar, and Gallo. Beltre gets a day off. Chirinos, Guzman, and Calhoun. And Drew Robinson patrolling center field. And Jeffrey Ramirez, 24. Uh, last year, he comes over from the Yankees. Uh, 10 and 3 at Trenton. That was their double A affiliate. Goes to Bowie. Goes 5 and 0. Oh. Great. Great numbers and the reason we do the change up because again uh, you know these guys can hit the fastball. How do you slow the bat down. So I, to me hey, the change up's real important as is the slider but what kind of command will he have with his fastball. And I don't mean strikes I mean can he stay out of the middle of the plate. Great hitting ballpark here in, in uh, Texas. The ball one two two. So there are the splits. Does tend to dominate right handed batters. Which is probably why uh, there are seven left handed <laughs> batters in the lineup today against them. Well, that's why the changeup could play, and they played a similar lineup the last time. And it's a foul ball. Mancini gloves. Nicely done. And he just made a new friend. Well, it's like playing on a pool table. That's how fast his infield is. And we win. We last night it was blowing our papers everywhere. So it's already doing that. Well, a little bit but not to the extent so maybe the wind blowing a little bit more out more like Thursday and Friday night. Because the Rangers scored 15 on Thursday 11 on Friday was with eight and three in the first two games and then last night was kind of a pitching duel. Two fouls it back See, and you're a little bit late on that ball. I mean normally if it's a fastball count he's trying to hit that ball out but because of the change up they remember. You talked about it last night. The challenge of not back-to-back -back starts, but pitching twice for a young pitcher against a team that's really swinging the bat. And the changeup will have a lot to say with his success. Just outside ball three. Now, if you're Ramirez, inexperienced at this level, but he's been in pro ball a long time, and now you're facing a, a similar lineup. It was a couple of weeks back. It was right before the All-Star break. Do you change your game plan, or do you stick with what worked in that game? Well, if it worked, then you kind of do what you did. And uh, Cena. Yeah, uh, great read right there by Trey, so he gets to it quickly. So every day, a little different defense. Chris Davis uh, taking the last couple of days off, so he's out of there. Peterson, Rickert, and Trumbo. Adam Jones uh, getting the afternoon off. Nunez, Beckham, Villar, Mancini, and then Austin Wims behind the plate. Here is Rudnet Odor, and maybe Ramirez will have better success against him. Comes in batting 274. And since the All Star break, oh, he's just batting 418. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of the missions was to have him have as good an August as he had in July when he was the Ranger of a month. 30 for 88, what, six home runs. I don't think anybody ever doubted his power, but. When you give a young player, and they did, I mean, they gave him what? The, 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 the $49.5 million deal that, again, has another option. So it could be a lot more than that when he was age 23. But who you swing at balls versus strikes, he's been a lot better. He walked five times the first night, even though he did hit a home run. And they weren't intentional. So you're, you're seeing a guy that has slowed everything down when you make a mistake, and you saw it on the Grand Slam off of Park. We saw him on the. I mean, he hit a rocket off Paul Fry, another lefty. So he's seeing the ball, and he says, "Hey, shoot!" Not only strikes, but quality strikes to hit. Weak pop up. There's Nunez at third, and he's got it. Two men down. Time for our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers, and let's see a Ramirez day night. Yeah, well, uh, he's a morning person apparently. Yes. Sir. So. Yeah, the minute I read that note this morning, going, I wasn't a morning person, but with that in hand, I'm glad this is the day game. But you ate pancakes before you pitched, isn't that breakfast? It is. You weren't a morning oh, person. Oh no, no, no! I'd say today I was. not Oh, today. Yeah. Even though last night's game was very, very, very quick. About two. Two twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. There's Elvis Andrews, line to right field. Trumbo on the run, and it's past him and against the wall. 
And it deflects away from Trumbo. Let's see what Andrews does. He's thinking three, and he's going to cruise in the third with a two out triple. Yeah, well, the wind's blowing out. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, he gets a fastball because Andrews coming off his best year, broke his arm early, so numbers aren't quite as good as last year. But look at this, and he just shoots it out there. And it just kites over his head. And then a uh, little corner out there. So it's an easy triple. And he'll trot into third. So Andrews with that base hit has equaled his career high. He's now hitting 16 consecutive games. The time run at third with two down. Yeah, and really of, of the guys that play semi regular Calhoun a little bit higher. Profar comes up. He's got what 292 with runners in scoring position. So he's played everywhere first third a couple of games big three run home run on Thursday night to give him the lead. That was a tough break for Trumbo out there because that wall by the bullpen it juts out and it hit by the globe part. If it hit where life is it would have come right back to him but because it hit globe where there's an angle it deflected the other way. Well yeah the good news is it's there's two outs so that extra base hopefully doesn't have any meaning. I mean now it does put pressure on your infield that's the difference between because we see a lot of guys and this wasn't the case that they they turn triples into doubles they, they, they you know just coming out of the box but that ball because of that Karen we talked about there's no way that you're going to not get the third base. Austin wins very good defensively so any ball in the dirt you would think he'd block keep it in front of him. Perfect pitch. Austin very happy to be getting a start today. He has about 25 family members here including his parents and siblings from California. Well very conscientious young catcher. I think he knows how important catching is and you know, if you're going to be a backup guy or even eventually a starter or whatever you, you better be able to call a good game and frame and block balls like that change up in the dirt. That's where that triple versus a double comes in. You see I uh, I see things and I observed yesterday you were in the clubhouse having a long baseball discussion with Austin Woods. Well we were talking about catching and then hitting you know about hitting and you know working the count kind of talking really about Odor I mean, how they've gotten to him. Hey it's not you just don't swing at strikes till you get the two strikes it's quality something you can hit something you're looking for. There's another good block on the slider. That's a good one. And of course, he's all ears because I think, it, you know, again, here's what we're talking about and a chance of getting by him. And unfortunately, that was a ball out of his hand, so Profar didn't swing at it, nor was he tempted. Well, you would think, even though know, Gallo, who's in three home runs in this series, this would be just, hey, I'm a change up, finish it right to the glove. And there it was. And he gets a piece to stay alive at three and two. But when you're swinging the bat well, and the Rangers are, they take those pitches and they turn it into another chance. That's an out pitch. A perfect change up down and away. If you're not cutting your swing down, we see the Orioles do it all the time. Some guys do it pretty much all year. Swing through it, and go get your glove and go out. But now he just has another chance. And then you become a tough out. Time requested at the plate by Austin Wins. You saw Mark Carlson point to the catcher. I think the baseball terminology now is you grind out the bats. Mm -hmm. And the 3 2 is upstairs, ball four. So the inning continues. Profar will take first. Well, just think about it. I mean, by fouling that ball off, what happens is now he gets Joey Gallo up. You know, Gallo, you look at it, well, he's only hitting 194, but he does have 29 home runs. He turned that. That nothing nothing game last night the two nothing on a one two pitch hit down the right field line. Hit one in the upper deck the other night so he's, he's, he's red hot he's having a very good start to August. Just under 500 seven home runs since the all star break. Andrews at third now Profar at first Profar has good speed. And here is Gallo. Exactly what I talked about how pitch count gets up 19 pitches now. This will be number 20. So far, bluffs going and wins. Looks behind him.
he wins he's signaling the middle infielders what he'll do if Profar takes off in case Andrews breaks from third. Well if you have a good base runner and, and Profar of course and got pretty good speed if you're Jeff Bannister and you manage the Rangers said well you might do that but then if you do that will you walk Gallo so I don't know if he'll be running him. I wouldn't think that would be the case. And Wins has done a very good job, albeit in few opportunities, but he has caught four potential base stealers and three have been successful. So his caught stealing percentage is 57%, well above average. Meantime, 2 0 on Gallup. And then if you're Jeffrey, you know, you want to hold him close. You don't let him get a running lead, but you better concentrate on Joey Gallo at the plate. Well, Andrews is getting a big lead because of the shift. Beckham is doing all he can to keep him as close as possible. Yeah, but that's why you take a stretch and you would do that anyway because of the runner in first. But you always do it whether there's a runner in first or not because of that shift. And Stairs ball three. Now we're going to you know have a pitch count if he's able to get Gallo. I mean you're going to be at least 25 pitches in this inning. And a lot of it has to do with that foul ball to throw Profar hit that perfect change up down and away. Just nicked it at the plate, kept the bat line, walked him, and now you got the home run guy. And you got to be really careful. Andrews a third of the way down the line. The O is outside ball four so four pitch walk. See so this is a young pitcher that's not wild it's just what happens is that you know you get caught up in the game you know, the triples that certainly puts pressure and then you're trying to be perfect. You know the carom off the wall that turned a double into a triple. So here are the road trip numbers for the O's two in New York this is game four in Texas birds have gone one and four. They batted 281, which is pretty good. 4.4 runs per game. That's above their season average. But the starter ERA combined with the bullpen ERA has been an issue. Well, you got one of those outlier starts by Cashner. He's come off a win. He gave up 10 runs and got five outs on Thursday night after pitching here last year and having a 262 ERA. So very unlike him. But it happened. I don't know where to put the hitter Chirinos who takes ball one. See and then Jeffrey just overthrows that first uh, pitch. Yeah, Chirinos hit a hang in slider the other day. Home run I mean way up in the exits. Smoked it. And of course that's what he does. 15 home runs on the year. Reno's 34 years old. He has been around. He's from Venezuela. Texas's third big league team. That ball's ripped in the left field. There's a base hit. Andrews scores. Coming around behind him is Profar. The throw home is not in time. There's a two run single for Chirinos, and the Rangers get the lead. Again, right down the middle, and he's waiting. So, figure, okay, do I make a good throw? But just not a lot of arm strength, and uh, he just outruns it. So, good jump, good secondary lead, and the lead, two to one, on the two out base hit. All the little things. So, the 3 2 changeup that Profar was able to tick foul. Kept his at bat going. He walked and Gallo on four pitches, and Chirinos bounces a line drive single in the left field. Peterson played it on the one bounce, but well, they have scouting reports, and you know, of course, he's a utility guy, but he played, came up, played with Atlanta at second base, play everywhere. But they know who can throw, I and mean, your third base coach, I mean, that's his job. Tony Beasley, you know, he go over every series. You're going, okay, can you throw or you're not? Did everything right except doesn't have the arm strength and and again what kind of lead does your runner get? I mean, you got a good one. And that's why they have a two to one lead. Otherwise it'd be still be bases loaded and one one. So a big batter here try to end it. Keep it at a one run deficit. 
Texas has now scored 104 runs since the All-Star break. They are the only team in the majors with more than 100 runs since the break. And it wasn't like they were playing really good baseball going into the break. They had only won two of 13 games. And they won seven out of eight since. Ball on a strike on Guzman. The result for one against Jeffrey in the game in Baltimore. Real good change up there, swinging a miss. And I'm sure Roger McDowell, an Oriole pitching coach, when he went on, he said, okay, hey, right there. And you can see balls 15 and only 13 strikes. He gets ahead of Guzman, one and two. Two on and two out, two runs in. Perfectly, you could see where the glove was. And those are the strides that Jeffrey Ramirez is going to make. Uh, yeah, can he throw in both sides of the plate? Got a good example right there. He did. But for Guzman, he fouled it off. Well, the other advantage, and you mentioned it earlier, both these catchers, Wins and Caleb Joseph, have caught him here in the big leagues as well as in AAA. And he got him with a fastball, went right at him. And a swing and a miss. But Texas gets the lead. Two run single by Chirinos. Through one. Two to one Rangers. in the win column. The Orioles host the Red Sox Friday August 10th through Sunday August 12th and in the game on Sunday August 12th all fans 14 and under receive an Orioles retro talking alarm clock presented by United Concordia Dental and as you heard featuring a Joe Angel wake up call. So don't miss out for your tickets Orioles.com. I got to get one of those. Wake up. Get up. And there's a strike. Well, ben McDonald wants one too. We all do. Well, if Joe really likes us, we'll be a little trouble there. But if he really likes us, he'll make sure we get it. Absolutely. Because he's the man. He's the man. We're helping promote it. Talking him up. I haven't seen it because we don't see commercials on the air, but. Apparently Joe did a commercial promoting that with the Oriole bird and Bonnie said it's very fun. <laughs> said Joe did a very good job on it. And then Cini working the count here. It's a hit three and one. Nunez on deck and then Ricker. So uh, Joe Angel on video. Yeah. Oh, yeah I always tell him you know you got a good face for radio and all that. Because he he just kind of laughs and so he's a lead off walk. Yeah I think this. Hopefully Ramirez will settle down, but uh, Drew Hutchinson kind of not overpowering stuff. Our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, John Twig of Ellicott City, has won $500 for being selected, and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit in the game today. 
You can play home run rich at scratch offs and win up to $50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash home run. Here's Renato Nunez. First ball swinging pops it up. A big swing and just missed it. Right where Andrews had him played and one down. Now here's Joey Rickard is in center field today. Adam Jones gets a well deserved day off. The first will chase Mancini back and Trey's going to love that. Yeah but the uh, Rangers dugout will. Well, of course he just got back to the big leagues. And Preparation not as because he's not running, not stealing. Orioles rarely hit and run. I would imagine you know he would be the type of guy, and not, you know I mean not that he's so slow, but if you play behind him, you know, he would take the extra base, heads up base runner. Well, yeah, he's a very good base yeah. runner. He's just not a base stealer. Think about Mancini, and Buck talks about this all the time. He, he's a very good observer. He watches everything he learns he's always willing to learn. He's always willing to work. Well that could be high school that could be coming out of Notre Dame Notre Dame as college coach. Well when he was at Notre Dame he was the rookie of the year his freshman year. And Zach Granite who's in the twins organization told me that. Mancini without a doubt as a freshman was the best player in the Big East Conference. He stood out that much as a freshman. Well, behind him Chirinos loves to do that and Mancini gets back in. Yeah because uh, what Trey's doing is he you know when you when you take your you know your, your your lead and your secondary lead right there he thinks that ball may get, might get by him. And he just snagged it like a first baseman and then he comes up knowing that he talked about. Robinson Torino is 34 years old so he's been around the block a few times and he knows what runners are going to do. But it was almost like they rehearsed it. Except he didn't want to go three and one. On, on Joey Rickard. If you get into those fastball counts and one thing about Joey Rickard. If he knows the fastball is coming and you make a mistake. And it has to be right around the belt if it's up around 23 he usually doesn't hit it that's his number. He can get on some heaters. Well, he has 28 hits on the year and six are home runs. And it's up and in ball four. So there's two walks in the inning and three in the game so far off Drew Hutchison. Well, let's get a look at the breakdown on Drew Hutchison. He's had a, an interesting year uh, against the Orioles. These are his first six starts in his career and his last six starts in his career against the Orioles. I mean, he just owned them and then all of a sudden, uh, again, the Orioles get him. And he's not overpowering. So you, the more you pitch, you can see that's 12 games over. A number of years, but he's never been an overpowering guy. He has to mix his pitches, and today he does not have his command to this point. What he needs to do, and the Orioles hope that doesn't happen. I mean, he's he's got to get the ground ball and a slider or something. But it's I mean, even that pitch, that's that's such a bad slider that you give up on it because you think it's going to hang inside. Austin wins his second start on the road trip. He caught the first game. On Tuesday in New York. Caleb has caught all the other games since. But in the game on Tuesday, he had a big game. A couple of hits, and you know, right here, I mean he smoked the ball all the way to the gap, and you know, the Orioles get on the board and then he dumps one into center. So you move him back and hit one in front of him. First multi-hit game of his career, but not a lot of at bats. And he does have a, a three-game hitting streak going. Four for eight in those games. Left field. Back it goes. There goes Calhoun near the wall, and that ball is gone. It gets out of here for Austin Wins. 
A big three run home run for Austin wins with his family in the crowd. And the Orioles get the lead back at four to two. Well there you go and uh, the ball is flying 104 miles per hour goes 407 feet and when it lands. Two to one is four to two now by Orioles leading. You talked about what we were talking about. I was just talking about, you know, he's still got to hit it. I said, hey, you look for your pit until you get the two strikes. He looked for the fastball, got the fastball right down the middle and didn't miss it. Well, that's got to feel good for his folks. Well, how about him? Well, <laughs> him as well, but you want to make your parents proud. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just kind of a meatball down the middle. Still got to hit it, ready. And the one thing about him last year, he came on the Raider because he hit the ball a lot harder last year. Double A blue average, you know, home run, not a lot, ten, but you know, average up there over 280. So he came on the radio. Radio radar is not just somebody that's a good catch and throw catcher. Hard hit ball. Guzman goes down to get it, and he takes a base hit away from Peterson. Nicely done for the second out. Yeah, sharply hit, and again, Guzman, a big, rangy first baseman. Really makes the play easy. Mainly because he's off the line. Again, it's really not an easy play in the sense because it's so fast, the infield. So Peterson retired. He's one out of two. And here's Tim Beckham. Tried to bunt his first at bat. It was a pretty good bunt, but Profar got him on a nice play. Foul that should be back in the crowd, and it will be. Jim, to answer your question from the first inning, the official score was very generous. He did get back in the sack. Well, it, it moved the, the runner up, yeah, but that think, wasn't the intent. No, but I mean, if you're going to give it when you give yourself up, what's the difference, really? And actually, it benefits the ball club more if you try to bump for base hit and get the same result. Only Profar is great play. Negated that. I understand. Well, the tradition is that if you think it's a bunt for base, that you usually don't do that. But it does serve the same purpose. I mean, I'm still a big proponent. If you want to get the game back to where it should be, guy runner at second, nobody out, and he gets the third on a ground ball to the right side, you get a sacrifice. Because you move the runner over, you make the next better. And it doesn't have to hinge on whether the guy gets him in or not. It really changes the course of the game. If you're the manager on the other team, hey, I might bring my infield in, if I'm a pitcher, am I going to maybe try to strike the guy out and walk him? It really changes the whole way the game is played by playing smart baseball. Reaches for it. Here's Profar again. And again, he gets Beckham at first in a close play. So the inning ends, but the Orioles get the lead. Two walks hurt Hutchison. Austin Wins comes up. His third home run of the year has put the O's on top.
in tonight's game. Well there are Austin Wynn's parents his dad in the black shirt with the glasses on that's his mom with the Orioles jersey on I bet it has number 61 on the back and being congratulated by a Texas fan on the home run by their son. Three run shot gives the Orioles the lead uh, Earl Weaver would love Austin Wynn's. Yes. For a lot of reasons as you could catch. So there you go Mr. Ramirez throw some strikes. Relax a little bit. Calhoun leads off then Robinson and Chu. It was a seven batter first inning. For Jeffrey. Well Willie Calhoun definitely a high ball hitter. I saw that. Clubbing some doubles the other way. Comes over in the U Darvich trade from the, the Dodgers last year. Hit 31 home runs in the minor leagues. Between the two organizations. And hit a little bit. And only 5-9. Well what's interesting about that trade. And you fast forward to the Manny Machado trade to the Dodgers. The Dodgers refuse to give up what they consider their top prospects yet the Rangers are very happy with Willie Calhoun and Houston El Diaz who's at Bowie who was probably the marquee player in that trade for the Orioles. So you talked to a scout today who loves him. Well I talked to a, a Tim Holt who's scouts for the uh, the Padres uh, San Diego Padres and I saw him yesterday I said you got to be a scouter. You got to look like a former player and Tim Holt and he said we were talking today and he, he said Diaz put down stud. Really like now I only saw him two games, but he said he reminded him of uh, Ioannis uh, Cespedes. Wow, but a younger version. Out of Cuba, same. So he said he didn't see a lot about throwing, but he said he really likes his bat. And those are the uh, reports you like to hear from scouts that are not involved in it. But I don't like it. I mean, that's a walk. That's the last thing you want to do. And, uh, the seventh pitch and a leadoff walk. Well, fans, Game of Thrones returns to Oriole Park on Tuesday, August 14th. You can choose between two special ticket packages, and both options include a Game of Thrones bobblehead. To learn more about each special ticket package and pick it up and purchase it at Orioles.com slash Game of Thrones. Here's Drew Robinson, and he'll take a strike. Yeah, Drew, what, uh, 175, but he's been up 80 times. He played a little bit last year. Came in for defense last night in the ball game. He was called up yesterday because the line of the Shields went on the concussion DL, which is a seven day DL. Fearing, feeling the lingering effects. The diving catch attempt at center field at Fenway Park the week leading up to the All Star break. Way <laughs> out in front. <laughs> well, looking fastball, getting fastball. And you know, that's, you know, I, I talk about it. I'm sure if you're listening, you're going, well, then you're getting a little nauseous. But just think about it. You go up to home plate. If, if you're Drew Robinson, you don't have to play a lot. But if you're a good young player, you usually can hit the fastball. You get to look for it for the first two pitches, or you get to look for the changeup. And it depends what the scanner reports say. You know, they'll also tell you the velocity, and maybe, yeah, and you look at film, and then you see, okay, is 93 really 93? Is there some deception? How's the movement? So that's how you see those swings. You know, he's looking fastball, he gets it, and it's just a little bit too quick. So for Jeffrey Ramirez, if you're going you're gonna to win up here, this is a changeup count. He throws him a fastball. And it's in the gap in right center field. And that goes all the way to the wall. Calhoun heading to third. He will be held by Tony Beasley. So Texas coming right back at Ramirez, second and third, and nobody out. Yeah, see, so I have no idea why they threw him a fastball. I, early on, I mean, if you can hit that ball about 40 feet bow, he hit it with one hand. And most young hitters are fastball hitters. So unless you make the perfect pitch, the ball down easier to get to. Calhoun. Otherwise, that would have been a triple. If he scores, it's going to be four to three, and Robinson can run. He'd, he'd been a third base. So 
know, the Orioles with a four to two lead but two in scoring position with nobody down and yeah, we'll see how Buck Showalter uh, handles the bullpen because of the off day so. You do have a little bit uh, of a rest period before you play the race. Shoe fouls off the changeup. Well, the Orioles have the infield back on the right side. Beckham now back at shortstop, and Nunez uh, almost up to the grass, but he's playing midway there, so not quite a shift, but they're expecting Chu to pull. Ground ball gets a run in. Very close pitch. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think he thought it was a strike. He dropped his head. Chu has one of the best batting eyes in baseball. It's on base percentage, 388. And he is third in the league in drawing walks. Sky the left field. This should be deep enough. Peterson should throw to third. Tagging is Calhoun. He comes home and Peterson does throw to third and that keeps Robinson at second base. So there's a sack fly to an RBI and it's a one run game. Yeah he just looked for a pitch he actually could hit in the air. Now if he did more on get, get himself another RBI but that's that's what you were talking about too. Veteran hitter knowing what he wants to do what the what the options are. So Robinson stays at second alert play by Peterson. That was only the first out if. Robinson gets to third he then could score on a sack fly. The 4 3 game here's Odor who popped up in foul territory to Nunez at third base. The other thing about Jeffrey Ramirez this year he's had to endure and learn what it's like to be a prospect who has options. He was first called up on April 10th sent back to AAA the next day. Then he was called up on June 13th sent back down June 15th called up June 28th sent down June 29th called up July 3rd sent down July 10th and then brought back the next day July 11th and he's been here ever since and now a member of the rotation. Which of course the minute you get back to the big leagues you get the minimum which is in the upper five hundred thousand so. Hey if I got to get on the Southwest Airlines flight to go to Norfolk. To go from I don't know. Can't even imagine what it, he's making a month versus what he makes at the big league level. You got to do it. They, they always talk about having optional players and pitchers. Well this is his fifth different tour with the Orioles. Popped up down the line. This ball is trouble and it's fair. Heading to third is Robinson and hustling into second base with a blue double is Odor. Well, he that's the ball he popped up the first time. So they're both the identical pitch and they're both great pitchers. I mean, this guy, you know, if he, if he doesn't hit home runs, he hit three of them. I mean, he walks or he does this. I mean, that's hitting the same change up. And boy, if you're on the mound, you're going, oh no. You know it's going to be a double. So good pitch, bad result. So Robinson gets the third. He had to make sure that ball fell in, and it did. And here is uh, one of the hottest hitters in baseball, Andrews. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second, still only one out. And Andrews, not really a guy that strikes out a lot, he makes contact. Tripleton scored in the first. Ramirez has walked three, and two of those three have scored. And because of the scoreboard, everybody's back from the infield. So any ball to the you know, in the air to anywhere in the outfield or a ground ball, especially to the right side. And it's blocked by wins. A 30 pitch first inning for Jeffrey Ramirez. Well, all you got to do is look at uh, you know 23 balls 27 strikes that's the ratio you want. We saw him what Mike Miner last night was 75 percent. Of course you know, much more experienced left handed. Gets away with a hanging slider. One and two on Andrews. This would be a good idea to get a strike out here against the hitter who's tough to strike out. Yeah I had that idea a lot and sometimes they <laughs> could do it and sometimes they couldn't. 
Well, Andrus, you know, Elvis can, I mean, he, we've seen him. He just pecks the ball the other way. He can drive the ball. He can do a lot of things. So he should be, and they're going to try to punch him out up and in. Ooh. And they hit the bat. Boy, did he get lucky there. Andrus, he's a diver, and that one came up and in. Well, and then also that ball is about a foot inside or more. You know, we saw Beltry and Hess hit him in the back. And, I mean, that's. Austin wins. And, you know, catchers, they, they're compassionate. Wow. Yep. The knob of the bat. Yep. He's looking right up to see if he's all right. Look at that. Yeah. What is now, that? Maybe, maybe an inch, inch and a half? Now, if you're really going well, that ball would have stayed fair. <laughs> well, he's right going back well. to you. <laughs> He's got a no, I don't mean Elvis. Hitting. I know. I'm oh, talking you about Jeffrey. Jeffrey Ramirez. And a good try right there. Well, this Rangers team, they lead the American League in strikeouts. They have struck out 1,072 times. But again, the, the hitter at the plate, Andrews, is a tough guy to strike out. 2-2 two, two is low ball three wouldn't chase the slider. Well and again you talk about ball out of your hand that's exactly what it was and the fastball in front of it. Yeah Jeffrey when he gets a little more experience if he's going to be good he'll just have to be able to command that outside corner. You know Bill and Bundy struggled a couple of times he would, I said would you work on 24 straight fastballs long the right already. Gets you you wind up back into where you're in touch with. 3 2 ground ball to second the tying run will score. VR plays at the first base so Andrews comes through. As Jim mentioned the Orioles this early in the game had the infield back so. It's all about the hitters today 4 4 in the second. Well this whole inning is about uh, experience you know two. Runners at second and third hit the sacrifice fly right there that was a very good slider. But he knew where everybody was playing put it in play like you're playing pepper. Get it to the right side you get yourself an RBI game tied. So here is Profar with the go ahead run at third as Odor moved up. And now two outs. Just outside. So he's trying to hit those corners and he's just missing. Ramirez, in his brief time with the Orioles, has averaged 9.2 strikeouts per game. But he's also walked three and a half. Yeah. It's a Man. swing and a miss there, one and one. Yeah, and you look at Jeffrey, and because of uh, you know the pitch count, hadn't pitched over five innings. And that gets he gets quickly to 90 pitches, whether he's pitching well or not. You know, even in the uh, the Texas game in Baltimore, where he only gave up two hits, he had the three walks, 94 pitches in five innings. Well, that's a little over 18. Just outside. Well, in the baseball, it's so true. It's when you play teams. And the, the Rangers, prior to the road trip leading into this series, were one of the more struggling teams in baseball. And then they got well on the trip. They won a series in Houston where they swept. They won a series in Arizona. And they found their strokes. And now it's hard to find a hitter not hot in this line. What a great play by Wins. You're sitting on the outside corner and you catch this. I almost hit him. So there's the definition right there of a catch and throw guy. Playing also three run home run power. <laughs> throw that in there. What's the scouting report on Austin Wins? Well, he can catch and throw and he can hit three run home runs. The three and one on Profar. And he lost him. So Profar has walked twice. That is the fourth walk allowed by Jeffrey Ramirez. Well, the good offensive teams, and we've seen it, you know, I played on those teams. The Orioles were those teams. Tanner Scott getting loose. You know, the Yankees, the Red Sox, hey, pass the baton to the guy behind you. And that guy, by walking, of course, Jerks and uh, Brokar happens to have 29 home runs leading this team. And that's how you get the big innings. Well, Joey Gallo, he walked his first at bat. He has homered in three straight games and he has seven home runs since the All-Star break. Only Chris Davis 
the athletics Chris Davis has more he has nine home runs since the all star. Ball one low. Yeah I think for Jeffrey and, uh, and I learned this when I walked 130 and 129 innings in a ball I went to instructional league and they said okay throw me 10 fastballs in the middle of the plate knee high. That's the way you find your release point and then you find out they don't go there. That wasn't that good. Jeffrey's not that good. So, but you've got to find your release point. He's trying to make perfect pitches, and you mentioned he's not doing it. So again, everything, hey, low and away, ball one. Now all of a sudden I got a guy, you know, he doesn't probably know how many home runs he hit, but he knows he's a home run guy. Oh, you gotta throw him a changeup. Well, you know, go left and the ball goes up. So for him to straighten himself up, he's just gonna have to get the experience and you're also gonna have to keep talking to him and then it'll be up to him. Roger McDowell with the skipper. An outstanding call there by Wins. Fastball County gave him the changeup. So Ramirez is trying to get out of this inning with the game still tied. You know, two on with two out. Door is getting a huge lead off third with the shift on. Broken bat line drive, and there's a base hit. Odor comes in, and Texas gets the lead. All the way to third goes Profar. He makes a good pitch. He saws off the bat, but it finds a hole. So 5 4 Texas here in the second. Yeah, I don't think it really jams him. I just think he hits it up on the trademark, and. Uh, and they got the shift on, but he doesn't. Is it more to center field? He gets an RBI. It's a single, which is something. He doesn't get a whole lot of those. 32 all last year, and it gives him the lead. And that's his 27th single this year. He has 44 extra base hits. So here's Chirinos. He drove in two for the base hit in the first inning. And he inherits first and third. Inside again, ball one. So he's up to 65 pitches, which means he's thrown 35 pitches this inning. Coming into this appearance, he had seen AL West opponents, Jeffrey, twice. He had the five inning scoreless appearance when he relieved Jimmy Yacobonis at the game at Camden Yards. Jimmy pitched the first four, and Jeffrey, five scoreless. And then in his no decision against the Rangers on June 14th in a start, he had five scoreless innings. So he had 10 scoreless innings against the AL West coming into this game, and he's allowed five runs already for an inning and two thirds. Slider just couldn't stay on top of it. Well, it's rather obvious he's just not on the top of his game, and we don't, you know, he's so inexperienced, we don't really know what the top of it is. But we do know that usually you know, the changeup plays up, he's able to get ahead, which he can't do today. And then he changeups it yet. It's just fastballs in the middle of the plate, getting behind, trying to you know, pitch, which is sometimes hard when you're that inexperienced. There's another changeup that comes off the plate. And you have days like that. And when you have an off day tomorrow, he's going to force Buck Showalter to go to the bullpen. I mean, this is probably his last batter because with Tanner Scott getting loose behind Chirinos, five consecutive left handed batters. And he walked him. And that is the fifth walk and the third in this inning. And here comes Buck Showalter. So it'll be a very short afternoon for Jeffrey Ramirez, who twice his team gave him a lead, and twice he has given it back. So Tanner Scott comes on. Bases loaded, two down in the second.
The Orioles have scored four. So Tanner Scott will come in to uh, uh, hopefully rescue the herd down here in Texas. So you can see you know, the, the numbers inflated because his ERA on the road is almost nine runs a game. And if you go back and look at some of his recent games, you know, he gave up a home run to uh, Joey Gallo here. You know, when he saw him up in New York, strike out the side. So again, uh, last start, inning two thirds, two hits, two runs, one earned. And then the one home run and a couple of base on balls. Power, power fastball. And then a slider when it's on, pretty hard to hit. So a big spot here. Only a one run game, but the bases are loaded. And there's a strike. Yeah, about you all what are talking about. Tanner, if you look at his numbers, you know, strikeouts every year have come up, walks have gone down. And of course, this is the first year he's doing it at the big league level. Good slider. And we saw what on Friday night. And they brought in Donnie Hart to face over Door, left hander with the bases loaded. He turned that game around with a grand slam home run. So this, you know, the way Hutchinson is pitching, I don't know how long he'll be in the game, but there's going to be batting practice because he's not, he doesn't have hardly anything. So get him out and take your chances. Check swing and appeal. He didn't go. Wow, looked like he did. I guess the Brooke with a small strike zone last night. Well, he had a, oh, he had a smaller swing. one. Please. You know, he was horrible last night and it's not getting any better today because that, that was definitely a swing. One of the worst games I've seen all year by a home plate umpire for both sides. And he got him another slider. So he strikes him out, and that'll end it. Texas gets three through two by four Rangers. Light the night walk. The O's have drawn 306 walks for a total of $15,300. Care First encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and a more active lifestyle. Oh. Orioles fans, the Hawaiian shirt. That looks like the new edition. They are everywhere. Yeah, the what, what do you think? Is the Hawaiian shirt or the floppy hat the most popular? Today? I think. The shirt? Well, I don't know about the giveaway because I don't know how many to give away. No, no, but I mean that fans really want because the floppy oh, hats are very popular. Yes, yeah, but I, yeah, and that's something you can wear pretty much more so. Like you don't wear this shirt to the gym. Unless <laughs> <laughs> you want to be noticed. You will be noticed. Now here's VR. He shows bunt. He takes a strike. That got pro far moving. So now it's the Orioles' turn to answer. Those got a lead in the top of the first. Rangers took the lead back in the bottom of the first. Those got the lead in the top of the second. Rangers got the lead back in the bottom of the second. And we'll see if Drew Hutchison can uh, calm down a little bit. You talked about the, uh, the early success with Toronto. 
won 13 games back to 13 and 5 in uh, 2015. They got him just shy of eight runs a game. That's good. That'll work. And he still threw 17 pitches per inning that, that year. Well, again, he's always had a pretty good idea how to pitch. He's just never been an overpowering type of guy. So he's got to make his pitches, and he struggled with his command, at least so far. That could change, of course. The arm really has a, a pretty good batting on it. And it's only the fourth game we're watching him, but I, I really like how he works the count. I mean, he's very well, patient. He was one of the best players in the National League in, you know, two years ago. 285, 62 steals. Wow. And he let off with power. He's the perfect thing for the Orioles. Now, so was Jonathan Scope. So. And the 3 2 is grounded and just foul. Wow, that looked like it bounced over the base. We are with a smile. He almost had one. Bobby Dickerson's talking to Mike Esterbrook saying, uh, What do you think about that? That, yeah. that bounced over the base. And there's a bloop and that's going to fall for a base hit. So VR hitless last night starts another streak here today. He now has six hits and 15 at bats with the Orioles all singles. Well don't forget the Mets will be at Oriole Park August 14th and 15th. And on Wednesday August 15th all fans receive an Orioles Maryland State T-shirt. For your tickets visit Orioles.com. So interleague baseball at Camden Yards with the Mets coming in. Maybe we'll get to see Jacob DeGrom pitch. Noah Syndergaard, the two studs on that Met staff. Or maybe not. Well, how about Zach Wheeler? He's the, about the look I just got from the well, Hall of Famer suggested that's not a good idea. Well, I was hoping more like <laughs> Stephen Mass, who just went on the DL, but I uh, hope he gets well. Or his replacement. He, yeah. Well, Zach Wheeler, I mean, you know, he beat Gosman yesterday, and I mean, I talk about 98, great breaking ball. Well, as good as DeGrom is, I mean, much better numbers. They never score any runs for Jacob DeGrom. There goes VR first attempt at a steal the throw he is out at second base bang bang play VR seems to think he was safe. Well he's kind of looking in here I mean he's already stolen what 14 and. So what six out of 50. I don't Ooh, know that looked like the hand was in. Yeah well you know a lot of times you try to tag the body. Yeah, All right. He's safe. Yep. So they're going to come in and again this type of ball game it's going to be the last man standing so I think that's probably a play that could I mean could be reversed. And again yeah. we don't know what New York sees but it, to, to us. Well there has to be enough to change it that's really well, what they look at. In, in their opinion. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Well, know, let, my let, opinion is. Let's hope they get this. Okay. Now where does he tag him. He tags him up on the body. But, uh, oh yeah he's yeah. safe. He's no, they're going to say, well, the foot. Now, this will give you a much better angle. Oh, yeah, he's safe. Uh, he's safe. He looks it, but I don't know if there's enough there. Well, that prior replay, you could see the hand hit the base before the glove hits the body. Well, they don't have those sensors like they have in swimming. Michael Phelps, <laughs> you know, win all his, his gold gloves. So there you go. Slow it down. And he's safe, so yeah, they have overturned it. Once again, young to man, go you are right. So there's his first stolen base as an Oriole, and he's in scoring position with nobody down. Well, that's actually, I mean, we'll give Buck the credit as a challenge, only because his video guys told him to. So one for the home team. Well, the visiting team. But. Chirinos has caught just six, and now 45 have stolen when he's behind the plate. Yeah, but he was really looking forward to getting that seventh caught stealing. <laughs> and he made a perfect throw. Foul back. Let's get a look at our PNC inside the numbers in Mark Trumbo. These are the different situations with none on, batting 300, runners on 198. So a 102 difference. That is the biggest, largest difference. Yeah, the uh, the runner in scoring position number, and, and it's kind of reflected in that the runners on because obviously it would be in second or third down at 200. And Trey Mancini also in the top five in that. Well, again, because of the runner in scoring position number. 
But not a lot of quality pitches for Drew Hutchison to this point. Wind blowing out, fast infield. Has been around long enough to try to invent something or reinvent himself. Left field. That ball's back. That has a chance. And that ball is gone. And the Orioles get the lead right back. Mark Trumbull with a three RBI game as he homers. And the Orioles jump back on top. Six five O's. Well, that's the uh, second three run RBI game in this series. Uh, three RBIs on Thursday, almost five. Great play by Gallo down the right field line. You know, the hanging changeup. Mr. T doesn't miss it. Tees it up. And another $500 for our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, John Twig of Ellicott City, who has added uh, two home runs today. So a couple of additional $500 prizes for John Twig, all courtesy of the Maryland Lottery. Still nobody out. Here's Valencia. Hard hit ball. Profar again to his left and takes a base hit away from Valencia. Well, shortstop uh, range, and uh, you know, again, that's that's why he's there. And he's going to play short and play second, first. Let's get a look at Trumbo's home run swing. Well, it's a changeup, and it's belt high or really thigh high. Where do you want it? Right there. I know everybody talks about launch angle, and I bet that launch angle was probably about 29%. But didn't it look like he swung down at it? I mean, it was. Now, 30, how yeah, how would you know that was 29%? Fascinating. Well, I was just guessing, but I, was kind of, <laughs> but I was only a percent off. Well, you know, Devers hit a uh, Devers hit a home run 40%. That's like almost straight up. I mean, Bo Jackson hit one in Kansas City. You know. It went about 450 feet, but it, it, it was like kept a, going. Yeah, it was like a 40 degree before they did that. You just could kind of tell. I mean, the only reason I say that is because after a while, the you know well, line drives 15 degrees. The optimum what home run swing supposed to be 26, so that one had a little bit more loft. So it's just kind of happy. We're ready, man. I mean, day game after a night game, but not going to bother us with an off day tomorrow. There. Zini battling here. He had a real good at bat in the second, drawing a walk, and he scored on the wins home run. It's be a nice game to get for the O's going into the day off. Well, nobody likes to get swept in a four-game series. Chopper towards the middle. There's Andrews near the bag. And Zini retired. And two men down. Fans, we invite you to visit at Masson Orioles on Twitter and enter to win a meet and greet with Buck Showalter presented by Hilton Hotels. For Hilton's best of Baltimore package, visit Masson.me slash Hilton BAL. And you think with the stuff that uh, Hutchison has that Nunez has been driving the ball. He becomes a home run hitter the way the wind's blowing out today. He's got a five game hitting streak going. Well, he, what we were told by you know, one of the uh, Dallas writers that they, they gave him the job. I mean, they, they, you can play. You play, you know, the utility guy, play left field, and uh, just not good enough defensively. So the Orioles are going to try to change that. You got the best guy with Bobby Dickerson to do that if he'll, if he'll do the work. Nice foul. Well, you look at what Nunez has done, Jim, the, the settling in, and he was a Triple A, so he was in the organization. But in his first six games with the O's, he went three for 19. And in his last five during this hitting streak, he's gone nine for 20, which is a 450 clip. So he has found the stroke, and he's settling in, maybe calming down a bit. You know, now he's just got to figure it out defensively and keep working. Good, good power right center. And so there's a good defensive swing. You know, the book on him is sometimes he'll. Get overly aggressive, but that you cut your swing down. We're seeing the Rangers do it. Adam does it. Adam Jones does it all the time. Good hitters do that. See, and these coaches, there's Scotty Coolball. They they are so good to these players. 
And there's a base hit to left field in the sense that sure they get on him they, they want him to work but they really they become part of their family. And all you had to do is see Tuesday when Bobby Dickerson had to talk about Jonathan Scope being traded. And Jonathan had to talk about yeah Bobby Dickerson I mean, helping him. Yeah. I think the so they care and if the player understands that you know you could learn more because the coaches are willing to do whatever they need to do to help you become better. So Nunez now with a six game hitting streak and here's Ricker. And he'll take ball one. You know the probably one of the best traits that all these coaches have on this staff is they have the ability to make you feel welcome. And with so many new players coming in that that is a really good trait to have. Well they had you know they all came up through the minor leagues. So that's what you do in the minors. You sign guys you, you trade for guys. You don't want them to be their best friend but you want to know them you have your back. You know, of course of course Wayne Kirby and you know, truth serum. That's oh. why L. Rod Henders was the best. Not only did I mean he caught my no hitter, so I'm a little biased. But <laughs> if I ever wanted to know how I was throwing or what was going on, truth. Sir. Oh, well, Wayne Kirby's like that, and so is Alan Mills in the bullpen. With all the uh, relievers that are coming and going here, with the two additions, Cody Carroll and Evan Phillips, uh, it's really good to have somebody like there's uh, Matt Moore, former starter, getting this. Somebody like Alan Mills, who was a, a gamer as a player, and he's out there in the bullpen to guide these young relievers. Well, he did it. He was a terrific reliever yeah. for the Orioles. He came up from the Yankee organization. And so Rickard battling here, two and one. Jump foul. Yeah, so Drew Hutchison, I mean, doesn't have much of a fastball. Getting behind, getting in the middle of the plate. That's how he's getting up six runs. So trying to change up, but that's the one, that's hung one to Trumbo. Joey walked and scored his first at bat. And somehow trying to get out of this inning. I mean, the pitch is just a slider. He just hadn't been able to throw that slider low and away for the righties. A two and two on Rickard. Center field that chases Robinson back still going back and on the warning track he'll make the catch. Joey hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark. But the Orioles get the lead back as Mark Trumbo goes deep his 14th of the year as the O's in front. the day when we are in Texas so why not highlight the young man from Nacogdoches Texas the Orioles first round pick this year Grayson Rodriguez and Jim 
He's in the Gulf Coast League. He's 18 years old, uh, but he's off to a pretty good start. They're bringing him along very, very slowly. Well, the reason they draft him, power arm, and uh, they like his delivery. You know, they made some mistakes in years past of getting guys that, and of course, he's a high school guy, college pitchers that, you know, maybe had pretty good velocity, but funky windups, and that usually doesn't last very long. But kind of like the fact, and I will guarantee you he'll give up a run before his career is over. <laughs> no, nothing but yet. But off to a good start. Zero runs allowed in 12 innings. And the other day, two days ago on Friday night, he pitched three innings against the Gulf Coast League Rays, and that is his longest appearance so far. And he's being brought along very slowly after a, a long high school season. Billy Calhoun up. Ball hit towards the middle, but there's Beckham. He'll play the hop. And he throws out the hustling Calhoun. And one away. Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by PNC. Make today the day. Oh, there go the Longhorns, Jim. Oh, there they go. And they're going from one part of town to the other. It's over in Fort That's Worth. Fort Worth, look, yeah. Look at all the fans. It must be a parade. A parade of Longhorns. There you go. That is a beautiful looking animal. It's good Everybody using Saturday game of the week. They come on right coming to you. Coming to you on horseback. Grab yourself a chair. I met the Longhorns, oh, yeah, not the horse. <laughs> well, the horses horseback. are beautiful too. Please, you, didn't you see the horse? I did. But I was, I was to get those cows where they would need to go. Come on. <laughs> you know, that would be a good job for you. No. You know, in the off season, you know, hop on the horse. I went riding. Spurs you know, going. You know, my youngest daughter, Kelly, who actually lives not too far from here, but she used to ride her. When I grew up in Arizona, I used to go over there from California when I ever go over to Eastern and go riding. And then when I went there a couple of times, it didn't hurt your ribs, hurt your rear end. It's dangerous. The horses don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that, not I, to I, mention the smell. I would be stunned that a horse would not like you. You're, you're they mis just seem to like I, 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 Yeah, maybe I was a little. Yeah, I, maybe they just seem not to like me. So buy him at 96, yeah. two and two. Well, he hit the double off of uh, uh, Jeffrey Ramirez. Uh, fastball down to hit. This is a little different. Slider count right here. But you got a lot of options once you get the two strikes. Line drive and right to the glove of Jonathan VR. Time to jump yeah. perfectly. Yeah, I, I think down. The, the message is Drew Robinson can hit the fastball. The pitch is what, about 98? And a really nice play timed it because you know again it, it, even if you're tall enough to catch it you got to time your leap so you got to read the bat off you have to have both legs you know and feet settled so you can go either way and then you got to be able to go up and you did so two down here's Chu a little bit low one and oh yeah, Tanner, Tanner came in earlier in this series and Gallo hit a home run off him. Yeah, that was on Thursday yeah, night. But making a lot of strides. And still the bad games. And we, we had to, we vacated your chair for a couple of minutes, but the, the one number why his ERA is that over six runs a game is it's almost nine on the road. You know, it comes in with what about 13 hit, 13 hit, 13 innings pitched and about 14 runs. So it's probably one of those aberrational numbers until he changes it. Check swing at a breaking ball. Feel and he went. Making up for last in when he missed it. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Stop the hands but not the bat hit. Drew from South Korea, 36 years old. This is his 14th season. You forget that way back when he originally signed with Seattle. And then he was traded to Cleveland. Cleveland traded him to Cincinnati. And he came here. We had that one great, I mean, really great year with Cincinnati, and that got him a long term deal here. Seven years, 130 million, still has two years to go. 2 2 check swing at a breaking ball. They appeal that time he didn't swing. So. Each team getting one there on the check swings. 
can also though that slider is really busting down. Well, he's got a good one. Um, what six times he struck out the side over the course of this year. There you go. There's that slider you talked about. And Chu just lays the bat down and says, "You got me. I was looking fastball." With Tanner Scott, a three up, three down third. The four game series of the up two to one and then down two to one and then all of a sudden three run home run by Austin wins stolen bases. The Lars is coming and joining the club over from Milwaukee. Uh, they challenge they get the call and then Trumbo. Having a good uh, afternoon he'll. Get a change up out of here so. The Orioles after trailing five to four will take a six to five lead so the Orioles. So five runs on two home runs. Uh, those are your Geico highlights. 15 minutes uh, could, or could save you 15% or more in car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. So Hutchison, you know, he gets really uh, traded as he takes an opt out or leaves the Dodger organization, comes here, does not pitch well, doesn't strike anybody out. And now we go to Matt Moore, the lefty, the veteran lefty. Here's Austin wins. He'll take low, 1 0. Matt Moore lost his spot in the rotation. You see 22 games, 12 of those starts. One and one. Yeah, the velocity uh, down from what came over from the Giant organization. So all the numbers up. Home runs are up. You know, at home, 0 and 4 with an ERA of 8.40. Didn't get the pitch well much in March, but in April, one and two, and then 0 and two. And then you're trying to get a little bit younger. Remember when he came up to Tampa Bay? Yeah. Since moving to the bullpen in nine games, he's pitched to an ERA of 6.88. He was 17 and four with Tampa Bay back in 2013. And then the Tommy John. Really never been the same pitcher, at least lost some velocity. You know, a little bit of a breaking ball changeup. Got in New Mexico. Easy, easy windup. Yeah, he's another of the very many pitchers that the Rays draft out of high school and then bring along slowly. They all follow the program there, and it's uh, obviously a good one because they have developed quite a few high school pitchers. Yeah, Kyle Snyder, who we'll see, he was actually uh, he's the minor league guy. Now, uh, Jim Hickey going to the Cubs. He's become the pitching coach. And, and fooled him. by that one. And a good slider. So, wins down on strikes and one away. Yeah, I think it's very difficult sometimes for starting pitchers because, uh, you know, when you're starting, you, you have your routine, so you're in the bullpen, but you're able to throw enough strikes to get to that count, and that's uh, about as good a breaking ball as you can throw. Not to mention, he's probably paying attention. 
Austin Williams hit that three run home run on a 2 1 fastball. Here's Jace Peterson is one out of two. He's in the leadoff spot today. Peterson five for 15 on the road trip. This was a good pickup by the Orioles because of his versatility. There's no one expected the season to turn out as it has but it's good to have a guy like Peterson that can play third base shortstop second base right field left field. And when he does get consistent at bats Jimmy tends to swing it better and hit. Well he really worked hard and you know it's got cool bond. And Howie Clark and you know, he had to got back on track and you know, a lot of cage work. You were talking about it the, they'd gone what. 17 or 18 games without a multi home run game and then all of a sudden that Sunday afternoon might have been against Tampa Bay. Hit a home run. Maybe a two run shot then double up the gap. And then of course if you're Buck Showalter you're not scoring runs you get to play a little more. And then the speed factor. He can steal bases and even though he's not an outfielder he can run balls down that a lot of outfielders don't catch. Well, the Orioles have seven multi home run games since the All Star break. And they have 38 for the season. And the 3 2 is foul back, so he spoils yeah. a good pitch. And 92 on the corner. That'll work. Well, you're a starting pitcher, you have your routine. Try to you're making a good salary, which he is. You want to help the team, so you go out there and then you have to adjust it so you can be ready. You know, these are one of those games, right? You know, when it's a battle of the bullpen, where if you're Matt Moore, you're thinking, well, I don't have a lot of wins, but, you know, I'm one and six, but this is a game if I pitch well and I hang around maybe to the seventh inning, when my team scoring runs, I might have a chance to pick up a second. Tanner Scott already is the pitcher of record on the plus side because of the home run by Trumbo. There's a bouncer to Odor. He plays the hop and gets it the first just in time to get Peterson two men down. We invite you to join your fellow students, alumni, and supporters for the University Nights at Oriole Park. Fans purchasing a University Night ticket package receive a unique Orioles cap featuring the participating school's colors and logos. The caps are limited, so be sure to reserve yours now. Just go online, Orioles.com slash university. Quite a few to choose from there. The two down is Tim Beckham. Mm. Tim has laid down a sacrifice bunt. He was also robbed of a base hit by Profar. Profar twice getting him at first. Bunt it took a good play. Off speed pitch down and in. Well, we've seen a good curveball. We've seen a good slider. 93 on the corner usually works. And coming off a year, I mean, he was San Francisco last year. He got 32, 31 starts. The ERA was almost six runs a game, so. That's a pretty good place to pitch, especially at home. The wind has found yeah, us again. It has. Wind tunnel. Well, early on, it seemed like it, the way the ball went, it was carrying out. Either Beckham was fooled or that was a really good take because that was a close pitch. It was that a little off the plate. He gets the count. Back in his favor, two and two after falling behind, 0 and 2. The Rangers bullpen is eighth in the American League. They're 
combined goaltend ERA, and they've made a lot of changes, is 4.15. Drop to third. There's his buddy Profar again. And he gets Beckham, and Matt Moore comes on, and has a three up, three down inning. First time today, the Orioles fouled the score. Tanner Scott forced into the game as the Orioles starter Ramirez goes just one and two thirds. He inherits the bases loaded, gets a big strikeout of Ronald Guzman, and that ended that threat. The Orioles then came back on a Trumbo home run to get the lead, so Tanner Scott getting it done. He's faced four batters. He has retired all four and two by strikeout. You know, those are little baby steps. He's Austin there. wins family, his parents. Austin with a three run home run today. They've been here the entire series and then the finale get to see their son play. That's got to be such a thrill for a parent to see their child in a big league game. Oh, but it's, it's probably started in Little League and Pony League. And, oh, no doubt about you know, that. Yeah. There's a strike. The door doubled and scored. It was a bloop down the left field line. In the three run second inning for Texas. He's had a nice little series, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And then you throw in the six walks. Well, he seems to have adopted your, uh, your credo about hitters. Until you have two strikes, wait for your pitch because he is taking a lot of pitches. Well, in two, series. two had a lot to do with that. And, uh, that's what we talked about right there. Look at that 545 in this series with Grand Slam, two other home runs, six walks, a lot of runs scored. Well, well, every hitter can do that. Some, some are more disciplined or more schooled than others. Just missed inside. Yeah, I mean it's. Everybody says, "Hey, get a, you know, have an idea, have a good, get a good pitch to hit." So you can pretty much, you may not get those pitches. You can have an idea. You may not always get a good pitch to hit, but you can have an approach until you get the two strikes, and then you scuffle because you got to hit everything. Until then, why try to do that? And he got him. Another good slider. So three strikeouts and one away. Well, the fastball is a little bit straight, even though it's 96 to 99. So this pitch, I mean, it, it goes straight down. He gets on top of it. And that's one of those sliders. Even if you're looking for it, you're probably not going to hit it. So three strikeouts and five batters for Tanner Scott. And here's Andrews. Tripled and scored in the first, then drove in and run to tie the game with an RBI ground out in the second. Strike on the outside corner. 
Seems that the uh, the confidence in that slider with Tanner Scott just is increasing. Well, you throw it, they don't hit it, and you throw it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that has a lot to do with the result. And they have hit his fastball on occasion pretty hard. And I always like when I came up, I was pretty much a fastball curveball hitter. And then I would come up with a changeup and a, a slider. And when they would hit my fastball, I didn't put it in my back pocket because what was the count? Where was it? Who was the hitter? Now, if you throw it low and away and they keep hitting it, well, you usually don't stay in the big leagues very long. But that doesn't happen very often. So the quality of your pitch is important. And his slider, I mean, it's not going to get hit this year, but I would imagine it has one of the lower batting averages. Even though he probably doesn't have enough innings. If you look at his numbers, the, the batting average or the hits on his slider are not very often, or not very much. There's another good spoil of a pitch by Andrews who has done that all series. There's a chopper. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> big hop for Tim Beckham. He gets his man and two men out. The fourth inning of Orioles baseball is brought to you by the all wheel drive RAV4. Toyota, what drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. They drive fast in Dallas. Yep, a lot of pickups. Mm, forward country. They're one of our sponsors. Yeah, Ford. Yeah, yeah okay. It's Ford country. So quite a bit of those back and forth to the hotel. Here's Profar. That right handed against Tanner Scott. Well one of the great things. I'm driving through Louisiana and I I text Ben McDonald and I where do you any place I can get some gator nuggets and I'm within a minute. He gives me an address of where I mean I'm only kidding. He says right <laughs> around from from LSU where I went to school. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Ben knows all about the he alligators does, yeah, in Louisiana. Yeah. So then I text my next text is basically, and of course I'm a pastor of the car because I would never drive a text. That's dangerous. There's Ben, and I go, "Hey, I cool see, I'm shades. seeing a lot of pickups in, uh, in gun racks." He said, "Oh yeah, a baby present, shotguns and a, a camo T-shirt." <laughs> and so I, I go for real. He says, "For real." He does enjoy hunting. And he has wrestled alligators. Well, he used to when when I tried to make that comeback uh, down in Sarasota, he would actually get baby elevators, uh, alligators, and elevators and alligators, <laughs> and then he would tape up the mouse and put them in guys' beds and, and, and bathtubs and all that. Oh, that's you know. not nice. <laughs> you know. Well, you want to get in a fight, Thomasville, Georgia. They have five he fields, and when you would walk back to the barracks, which is where everybody was housed. You would see snakes live and then some dead. And one of our guys put a, a, a dead snake in somebody's bed. So imagine getting in bed in, in, in the dorm. That, that precipitated a fight, which it should have. Left field down the line towards the corner and foul. Who got it? So far, just missing. Trying well, to get yeah, it out he, right down the line. He hits about 20, what, about 25 points higher, but not as many at bats, and only 97 to 252, and only two home runs versus nine hitting from the left side. But with this wind, and you hang a slider, you know, to see if you can get whatever, maybe a fastball in. And there's a ground ball. Well, he can hit a little bit, and that's why they've stuck with him. All the arm injuries, and still very young. And then I'll bring up Gallo who homered off of Tanner Scott on Thursday night as you mentioned. All right here are the uh, the splits that you requested. Opposing batters bat 158 against Tanner Scott slider. 375 against his fastball. So we're seeing why he throws it so often. Now that will change. I mean, there's 97 on the fastball, but it's up and in. And 
You know, we were, they were talking about uh, Stanton, and he was able to get Stanton out there. And he said, uh, Miguel Castro getting loose for the Orioles because we just run the ball in on him. Well, that might be so at 97, but can you do it out over the plate? It all it changes. So some hitters are they like to get their arms extended. Some guys are low. I mean, so 98 up and in, and they're not going to mess around. Let's see if you can hit that. And if you throw a slider now because he's late on the fastball, just strike the ball. Started knee high in the middle of the plate and let it dive to the outside corner. Just off it. Gallo now with 15 RBI since the All Star break. And there's the fastball, and they wanted to go up and couldn't get it there. Here's the probability of where he hits the ball. Almost a certainty, isn't it? Yeah. On the ground. Well, a lot of teams they just look at the way the the angle of the bat. If you're an uppercutter, which Gallo is, hard to hit a ground ball to the left side. Runner goes, delayed steal, the throw not in time. So so far a delayed steal. And he gets in the scoring position with two down. Yep. Well, he got a running lead, and, and then Austin wins. I don't think it would have mattered. It certainly would have been closer to throw it been a little bit more, but he had to hurry it. From Mullen two to two and two on Gallo, who did walk in the first, RBI single in the second. And he got him. So Tanner Scott, two K's in the inning, two and a third innings in relief, scoreless. His longest outing of the year, strikeout of Gallo, ends the Texas Bowl. Yes, home versus road. Not surprising in this hitter's ballpark, Jim. The Rangers have the second biggest difference, and the Orioles are sixth. So the Birds love hitting at Camden Yards and not as effective on the road. Yep, and, you know, and the Rangers are like a 30 point, 40 point difference in batting average. I mean, you come in here and you go, like we said, every time I, when I first worked in this ballpark, I said, what a great place to pitch. And then the game starts. <laughs> <laughs> Fly balls carry. You know, maybe balls that are caught in other ballparks. Carry them their way through the infield, and I would imagine that maybe it's a little bit better to pitch in April and May here, and then as it heats up, the, so does the infield get hard. Jonathan Villar gets Matt Moore. He'll take a strike. So Matt Moore, they uh, they trade for him, and then last year in San Francisco, he led the National League in runs and earned runs, 200 hits in 174 innings. So you lead the National League. You come to the American League with a DH and a hitter's part, and you think you're going to get better. No injuries. So that was the stretch. And it didn't work out. 
They are chased the pitch there. Twenty nine years old is Matt Moore. He seems oh, like young. he should be older. Yeah. Well, because he came up so young and he was so good. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, when he went 17 and 4, then the next year, Tommy John came back and pitched okay. I mean, 7 and 7 in Tampa. But if you look at Tampa Bay, and I think you have to factor all these things when you're looking at pitchers, it's in the American League East and you don't play all your games here. That's the only pitching part. They usually have a pretty good defense, you know, mobile outfielders and so forth. Doug Brocale looking on. But I look at the stuff last inning, it wasn't bad. 92 93, good slider, good curveball. Did not get off to a good start and now relegated to the bullpen. Ball of two strikes on VR. Left field, that ball's hit deep. Back it goes, and that ball is gone. VR hits his first Oriole home run and a big insurance run in the fifth. So Jonathan VR, a two hit game, his third multi hit game and fourth game, four games with the Orioles, and his first home run. And there's another $500 for our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, John Twig of Ellicott City. Boy, that was a bullet into the seats on a 1 2 pitch. So the Orioles with three home runs in this game. A three run, a two run, and now solo. All they need is a grand slam. You know, take a look. Look where the target is. Look where the ball is. This is by about what, two feet? Torino's never got a chance to catch it. Got all of that one. The other thing about Jonathan uh, Villar, and we're seeing the best of him, is that it's a very controlled swing from both sides. Trumbo gets under one. Is it going to be Robinson or Calhoun? It's going to be Robinson angling towards it. He's got it for the out, one down in the Oriole fifth. Fans, the Orioles host the Yankees August 24th through the 26th. And for each game, fans are encouraged to bring any non perishable food item or cash donation to the park. To benefit the Maryland Food Bank. It's part of the 32nd annual Orioles Reach Food and Funds Drive presented by Masson, WJZ TV, and Pompeian Olive Oil. For tickets to come on out and join us, just go online at Orioles.com. That is always a very enjoyable weekend to help a lot of folks. Every year, the Orioles and their fans seem to top the previous year's donations. Here's Danny Valencia, who has been robbed twice in this game. Line drive at Andrews' first at bat, then a diving stop and a ground ball by Profar in the third inning. Uh, Jim, uh, when you were doing your scorecard, I was doing a little, uh, you know, we were talking about Texas Sings last night. Mm -hmm. so. Right at Profar yeah. again. <laughs> Not Rob there, but so there's your five to three. So, okay, so when you do something dumb, bless his heart, that the Texas Saints. And then, of course, and then if why was you, that the first one you picked? When well, because that's what I got from my wife who's from oh, Texas. And then okay. the other one, of course, yeah, I'm praying for him. <laughs> <laughs> that usually means I hope he gets hit by a truck. I, she translated. And the other thing is, and we're going to be fixing to do this. Fixing, you know, I'm fi we're fixing to go to Tampa Bay. We're fixing to have breakfast. We're fixing my scorecard that the cameraman spilled iced tea all over. So we're fixing. When Susan said, being from Texas, she didn't realize it wasn't a real word until she was about 27. <laughs> That's just a Texas word. Well, there you go. If you were in New Jersey, we'd say, yeah, see, I knew how, you, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> how you doing? Well, they, we're, we're doing pretty good today. <laughs> Seven to five for the moment. Yes. <laughs> Mancini with a count of one and one. To the breaking ball. The 
Orioles with seven runs. Uh, Hart now beginning to get loose. Miguel Castro was up. Torinos will lead off and then five consecutive left handed batters. Mancini chases Chu back and he's got it for the out. The Orioles do add a big insurance run the way the ball's flying today. Jonathan VR, his first Oriole home run, and he owes that to the lead in the fifth. and other corporate leaders to support Baltimore City's Youth Works program, which seeks to provide as many as 12,000 Baltimore City youth with summer employment. To donate, visit BaltimoreCityFoundation.org and choose Mayor's Office of Employment Development Youth Works. And to learn more, visit YouthWorks.OEDWorks.com. So Donnie Hart comes on. Uh, this will be his 13th game. He did give up the uh, grand slam to Odor the other day. So three in inherited runners, and that's usually a black mark on your numbers. Righties, they hammer them. Lefties, those are the guys he needs to get out. And that home run the other night, first one of the year. So as you said, you got the righty, uh, Torino's coming up, and then all the lefties, and you're trying to match up if you're Buck Showalter and want to win this game, Donnie Hart. Here's your opportunity. And VR with a two hit game in his first Oriole home run. There's Chirinos, and there's a strike. The Texas bench today is three right handed batters Tochi, Beltre, and Kiner Falefa. Kiner Falefa and Chirinos have split this four game series behind the plate. And in the heat here in Texas, that's a good idea. Their new ballpark will be a dome. Will they have a retractable roof for early in the year, late in the year? I don't know if it's well, up to dome, obviously. Well, I mean, like. I mean, like Seattle. Or, or, no, they or want or air conditioning because it's so much hotter here. You know, I mean, because oh, yeah. in April the weather's nice. And, Obviously, this time of year. With real grass versus artificial turf. Right. It's a good question. Well, you know it'll be big because it's Texas. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, there's going to be over by the Jerry Dome, so. Which is out that way. Yeah. So it's hard to miss. Mm. Miles back. Fastball. There's Globe Life Field, which they can uh, build year round here. And way the distance, you see in the top right hand corner, that's the Cowboy Stadium. So they're going to be side by side. It's called AT&T Stadium. And that has a retractable roof. Yeah, what's weird about that is when you watch a game there, one of the ends is glass, and it always seems like it has something to do with the outcome of the game. 
because hmm. you're either throwing into the sun on a on a sunny day. You would think that design that's a flaw. Here's your change up. So if your receivers can't see the ball you're throwing in, well, you can't see your receivers, whether you're the home team or the visiting, that would, that, that would change the nature of the game. Good at bat for Chirinos. So he's worked the count full. And I try to get him out with a change up, and, uh, and there it is. So back to back change ups. Second one good. First baseman, Again, 450. That number just went down because he made a good pitch. And that's the way Donnie Hart has to pitch here. He's got to be able to do a better job to be able to get right handers out. And then when he does get the left, he's up. Take no prisoners. Here's Guzman. Guzman has been up twice. He has struck out twice. Once was against Jeffrey Ramirez, the starter, and then against Tanner Scott. And that really was the biggest at bat in this game because Scott came on, bases loaded, two down. The Rangers already had a 5 4 lead, and Guzman struck out. All speed breaking ball. When you have a big swing, we talked about it. Not that he can't hit, and because he can a little bit, but he's a young hitter. It's going to have to get a little shorter, otherwise you won't hit the high pitches. Well, you know, if you have power, and Donnie Hart's not a power guy, so he'll try to finesse his way through this at bat. The guys that throw 94 and above, they just try to get him out in. It's hard to get to that pitch. Better low ball hitter than high ball hitter, and then throw the ball by him away. So either shorten the swing or stop swinging at that. It's sometimes hard to do for young players. One and two with one out, and nobody on. Breaking ball just missed inside. Ball miss, ball three, so back to back three and two counts. That has been a problem for Donnie this year in the big leagues. In uh, 12 innings, he has struck out eight, but he has walked six. Well, you could just see him there trying to get a little bit of extra, and when he does, he just misses his own by a smidgen. And that's all it takes to get to this count. Oh, right down the middle. Or at least it looked like it. Walk brings the tying run to the plate. So Buck Showalter on the phone there. Very often he gets on the phone to the guys in the video room to see if what he saw from the dugout matches what the pitch was. They look at the video for him. There's a strike. Orioles video. Guys do a great job. And Calhoun only won about 12 at bats against lefties. Two for 12, no home run. Well, this is your guy. Doesn't get to see a lot of lefties. I mean, if you're Jeff Manager and you manage the Rangers, actually the Mazzara injury allows Calhoun to play, and then you can maybe do a little bit better of an assessment. One thing we know about him, he's a pretty good high ball hitter. And to the opposite field. That's where they play him. And there's the hanging slider. That's that's a home run pitch. And you got away with it. So make a better pitch. You can always read the bat if you're if, if, when you get your experience and you want to know where the bat head is. Is he behind? Is he out in front? Well, that was a home run swing as Castro's back up throwing. Another 0-2 pitch to Willie Calhoun instead of throw to first. It was a token throw. Well, either that or maybe you just think he's leaning. But there's when you're down by two runs and you don't steal bases, you're not going anywhere. Last thing you want to do is get picked off. Welcome back, ground ball to Mancini. Ooh. 
He had to avoid the barrel, just <laughs> does get it to second base. That was some play by Trey Mancini. Well, the bat's about, what, 10 feet into right field? So all off the fist. And then, of course, he comes in because he's playing on the bag, so he's going to get to it. Great angle right here. Watch the bat. And he misses that and then almost stumbles. Heads up play. Because if he doesn't make a good throw, they are going to have the go ahead run at home plate. But they get the lead runner. So the out and the lead runner. That was not a root play team play by any means. Here's Drew Roberts in the face of the lefty. Swing a miss at the big breaking ball. Well, he's been up twice and hit two rockets on fastballs. Double up the gap and then a line drive that Beckham made a nice play on. Assume Donnie Hart been paying attention, but Austin wins behind the plate should know that. So steady diet of breaking balls. So this has become a bullpen game with Ramirez going just an inning and two thirds in his start. But as Jim pointed out, with a day off tomorrow, Buck can be very liberal with how he uses the bullpen because he has eight arms out there. Another real good breaking ball. Two outs now with the runner at first. And he got him. So down on strikes goes Robinson. And the one out walk does not hurt. Our Ram do ups are brought to you by Ram Trucks. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer or log on to RamTrucks.com to get to work. Guts, glory, Ram. Times, but got it back. All those fans here in Arlington on a very hot day, upper 90s probably by now. Well, there's an optimist. He's in the upper deck, out and left. Looking for a souvenir. Somewhere he is. Let's put it down. Just guessing somewhere. Well, 404. That's center field, right? Right center. Right center. Oh field. yeah, he's right by the Oriole bullpen. Yeah. There you go. You were only off by five decks. Matt Morris stays on. Here's Renato Nunez. And there's a strike. I bet you that's a pretty good spot for a visiting fan because you can talk to the relievers. Right there. Certainly got the right garb on. A little cooler over by the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. You know, right there now, if you come across the field, if you want. You don't have sunscreen. You go over by their diet, their bullpen because you're in the shade. If he moved over five seats, he'd be closer to the bullpen, yeah. and then he wouldn't have to yell. 
Well, don't they? When they go up on the grass, can't you run out there? Nunez has another base hit. He's thinking too, and he's trying it. The throw, the tag, he is out at second base. What a tag by Odor. Well, Calhoun can't throw, and they know it. Wayne Kirby. Get uh -huh. a bang bang play, and they may look at it. Matt Moore likes it, of course. I mean, he threw like a infield fly rule from left. But Odor, Odor did make a terrific catch and tag. Here's Jerry Rickard now, one out, nobody on. All one inside. Joey has walked and scored. He has flied out. Matt Moore, one of three lefties in a now seven man bullpen. Austin Bibbins Dirks was sent down today to make room for Drew Hutchison. Calisthenics. The Yankees and the Red Sox conclude their four game series tonight with Tanaka against Price. The Red Sox are trying to sweep that series to go up nine and a half games. Yeah, but it's up to seven in the loss column, which you can't make up. And a swing and a miss. Oh, good breaking ball from Matt Moore. Two down on the quick tag by Chirinos. Well, you always encourage the good catchers. They encourage their guy. You can see where the glove is. Throw it down there, and when you do, it blocks it. And quickly tags him. Perfect block. That bounce. Get up on his chest. A little bit below the chest, and just pounced on it. The other suddenly interesting race is the surge of Oakland. They are now just three and a half back of the Yankees for the top wild card spot, which means you would host that game. Oakland has won five in a row and seven of ten. And of course, all of a sudden, everybody's starting to say, well, okay, Oakland actually, they come to Baltimore still, but there is your wild card, and then. Seattle not playing as well as that late and then what Cano comes back at some point but and Seattle's lost five in a row and seven of ten and they are here tomorrow They're playing at home today they have the finale of their series with the Blue Jays and Seattle leads that one two to one in the fifth the Orioles still have a series in Seattle there's a strike Austin Wentz thought he had ball four yeah, Oakland, that's right. They still have a, a trip to Baltimore. Now. Which means they probably still come east. And I don't know who's on that. I'll look up in a second, to, you know, who's on that trip, whether it's the Yankees or the Red Sox. Popped straight up. There's Torinos, now called off by Profar, who had a better angle. So he is there for the out. A three batter inning, base hit, but Nunez gunned down mid sixth. The O's in front.
Jets. Our coverage on Masson 2 will begin at 6.30 with those extra presented by Ford. And then game coverage at 7 o'clock. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Adam Jones getting a day off today. Plays hard, plays every day. Chu against Donnie Harder stays on. Lefty, lefty coming up. And then Elvis Andrews, a righty. There's a bouncer right to third, and there's Nunez. Charges to play the hop and gets his man. And one away here. Fans, you can enhance your next game day experience with the MLB Ballpark app. You can access and manage your tickets, enjoy check-in offers, exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Trumbo big day today, three RBIs, two-run home run and an RBI single. We're just trying to salvage one here in this series. Yeah, so I'm looking at the A's. The A's, they play the Dodgers, the Angels, Seattle, Houston. Coming back east, when they come to Baltimore, they go to Tampa Bay. They do have the Yankees at home. How many games in that series? Three. Okay. Early September. And then they finish with Seattle. That'll be a big series. And then the Angels. Last six games of the year on the road. A one to a door right there. Fastball for a strike. Well, inside half, and that's where he becomes a guy that's going to hit it really hard. And the other thing is, we've, we've mentioned, uh, and their best hitter in the month of July, 30 for 88, is not swinging at too many bad pitches. Fights off that breaking ball. The other race that's really interesting is the NL East. Where the Phillies are holding a game and a half lead on the Braves and the Nats are hanging around. But they are six back at third place. And all three of those teams won today. Well, Bryce Harper's actually, he's got his average up over 230. Been around 215, 218 all year. Wing and a miss. Real good breaking ball. Well, the key is against the lefty, you know, the good left handed hitters, they hit the one that starts inside, but when you get the two strikes, all bets are off. So a little bit of movement. You can see right there, couldn't track it just away enough as Donnie Hart does a great job, and now we'll leave. So Hart leaves, Miguel Castro comes on in the sixth.
Well, you can look at the numbers. The only thing that uh, you know isn't good. I mean, other than the record on a, on a team that's only won 33 games with the walks. So 39 walks in 63 and two thirds innings. Home runs. One of them the other night. Or Odor hit one of them, and then uh, all righties and lefties low number. And a few more ground balls and fly balls. Yeah, the home run by Odor the other night. First time he's allowed runs since the All Star break. So he's been pitching pretty well. Yeah, you look. I mean, everyone's in a glitch, but the, what gets him in trouble? You know, so young at 23, wind up gets a little bit out of whack. Got. You very rarely could ever accuse Buck Showalter of overusing his pitchers, but if anybody pitched a lot, and it was him almost every other day for a while, because you know, injuries and guys not pitching well and whatever, but great arm, 93 to 98. There's 98 with movement. Now he's, I'm not sure he always knows where it's going, but he's, <laughs> he's going to outstuff you. I went through that. And then down the road, you're just hoping he'll be able to make his pitches. In other words, wherever the glove is, it's what wins. Glove on the outside corner. And hit it. And it could have called him out. Let's see if he moves the glove. It's pretty close. Well, if you don't get that pitch, a little tougher to pitch. Well, Orioles pitching has struck out eight, but there's only been one called strike three, and that was since Su Chu to end the third on that real good slider by Tanner Scott. Donnie Hart struck out three in his inning and two thirds. Slice down the right side, fading back and out of play. And because of uh, Miguel Castro's arm angle, it's hard to really throw a great slider. It's just hard to get on top of it. So his two effective secondary pitches most of the time are fastball changeup. And he'll throw the changeup in any count. But right here, you don't want to go three and two. And you have foul ball. You have pre pretty much two options, and again that 97, 98 sets up a good changeup. Unless you hang it, make your pitch, get the third out, and let the hitters come up. Be the seventh pitch to Andrews. Castro looking to get this final out in the sixth. And there is the change of it. Once again, pretty pesky lineup. Red Hot, as you mentioned, scored more runs than any team since the All Star break. They also won seven out of eight games since the All Star break. Another 2 2 pitch. And he got him 96 and sinking at that. So a three up three down inning for the combination of Donnie Hart and Miguel Castro the strikeout ends the six.
run. Bases loaded in the second inning and strikes out Ronald Guzman and he would go on to pitch two and a third innings longest outing of the year. He struck out four no ones on one hit. So he is in line to pick up a win if the Orioles hold this lead here and they lead it seven five as we head to the seventh. Here's Chase Peterson to lead off top of the lineup against Matt Moore who begins his fourth inning of work. And there's a strike. Peterson singled and scored in the first. Reaching for that one. Yeah, the last time uh, Matt Moore pitched as as long as he's going to attempt to pitch today was all the way back what July 7th. And it was a good one. A couple of hits in four and a third innings. No runs against the Tigers. And Peterson down on strikes and one away. Strikeout number three for Matt Moore. Yeah, it might have been a backup slider. It worked though. And Beckham sacrificed bunt in the first. He has since grounded out twice to Profar. Ground out in the second. Profar robbed them of a base hit. He's been very consistent since the All Star break. Looking to extend his current hitting streak to five in a row. Beckham now has 14 multi hit games. He has nine RBI since the All Star break. He's going to need the swing and he fouls it off. Well, for him, of course, you know, you look at his to totality of his numbers, he missed two months with a core injury. That takes a while to come back. Not a full strength. 53 games. Yeah. One more game would have been a third of the season. That was a good take. So two and two on Tim Beckham. Trumbo, as always, talking hitting with Scott Coolball. Yeah, Scott was actually he was a minor league hitting instructor and he was here I think a couple of years as a big league. All he did here was lead the league in hitting twice. And when he made a man managerial change, he was out of a job. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. Two balls and two strikes on Beckham. And he got a really speed. good change up. Yep. Well, he's a starter. He's got all pitches. He's got a slider. He's got a curveball. He's got a changeup. Here it is. And he's, you know, with the exception of the Millar home run, he's pitched well. I mean, that was just one pitch in the middle of the plate. And he screamed out of here to left field. Moore has restored some order to this game. He's allowed only one run since he came on, and it was the home run by this man, Jonathan VR, in the fifth. This is the fourth inning of work for Matt Moore. Ground ball, base hit the other way down the line. VR is thinking too. He's going to make you throw him out. He bobbled it, and VR with a hustle double. So he has a three-hit game. Yeah, the guys that can run. I mean, you know, you've been around, closing in. Oh, hey, hey, I don't know, what about 2,000 at bats? I mean, watch a great angle right here, right, right at us. So he knows where it's hit. Doesn't even matter. Again, Chu's got a good arm, and this doesn't help. But he's going anyway. He knows who's playing. He knows how quick he can get there. And I'm not even sure the, the best arm ever in right field could have thrown him out. And then the other luxury is it's right in front of you. And you could see it happen as you're going down the first baseline. 
There's Mark Trumbo, two for three with three RBIs, two run home run, and an RBI single. Just inside. Yeah, he just missed a home run the last time. He was guided deep center field. Two outs, down by two. You know, Valencia makes his living hitting off lefties. You gotta be real careful here. You either make your pitch, if not, take your chances with Danny Valencia's on deck. That's a high change up. So Trumbo's second three RBI game in the series, and he now has driven in a run in four straight games. He has eight RBIs in this series. We are at second with two down. Trumbo a little late after the changeup on the prior pitch. Three for four so far today for the O's. Well, their other win on this series was what that second game in New York. They went five for ten. One for five last night. Ball on two strikes. Trumbo left field. He's got another one. Have a day, Mark <laughs> Trumbo. A two homer game. He has five RBIs. And the Orioles beginning to pull away here in the seventh. Well, it's, it's the sequence of what they were trying to do it is remarkable because for some reason at 92 miles per hour they thought they could throw a fastball by him and you know you got to agree I mean you're a veteran pitcher it's catcher may put a, a sign down but it's your responsibility and for whatever the reason you can see right there I mean that ball goes what 416 feet exit velocity of 104 they just think that and he does tomahawks it. Second multi homer game of the year for Trumbo. The other was July 1st against the Angels, that at Camden Yards. So, against this hot Texas team, a little wiggle room now with a four run lead. Yeah, so again, look where the glove is. I mean, they're trying to go right there. He throws it there. Of course, he doesn't get it in. It's gone. I just don't understand why. If you're going to throw the pitch there, come in. Because they're already, you know. Oh, he's late on the changeup. That's how Gallo hit the home run last night. So another $500 for our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, John Twig of Ellicott City. He'd be our best friend by the time this game is over. Four home runs. He's doing well. Plus the original $500. That's a good point. That's a $2,500 day so far. And of course, Valencia is certainly capable of hitting it out here, get it up in the air, let it fly. Chopper towards third, pro far to his left. The spin and throw, and he kept his foot on the back. Guzman did. That was a heck of a job there by Ronald Guzman. So the inning ends, but the Orioles add to their lead. A two out double by Jonathan Villar. Mark Trumbo's second home run of the game. He goes up 9 5.
now has 15 home runs and he's up to 39 RBIs. The professional hitter just keeps on hitting. Well, Mr. T, he's on a mission. And a lot of the uh, rest of the offense been traded away. Scope and Machado. So, hey, if they're going to pitch to him, he's going to get pitches to hit. He'll hit home runs. The Joey Rickard moves from center to right and Adam Jones who was given most of today off at center field so Adam will go into Mark Trumbo's spot in the batting order Mark's day is done. So when you're that valuable to the team you get seven innings off not the whole game. <laughs> All right wait boys nine runs. So now Miguel Castro. Do your job came in. Got him out of the last inning with a strikeout. Well, we saw what a, a seven run inning, the second inning on the, on Thursday. So, while well, nine to five in most ballparks is comfortable, I don't know if any lead is safe <laughs> in this park because it's, it's very hitter friendly. They've had two innings in the series in which they've scored seven runs in an inning. There's a strike taken by the leadoff man this inning, Profar, who's in the cleanup spot. Profar has been on base all three times. He has walked twice and he has singled. And he gets away. Castro struck out Andrews to get the final out of the sixth. Bullpen's done a fabulous job here today. Four and a third innings of scoreless relief following Jeffrey Ramirez. A little bit low. You no, know, they're looking for walks and. The one number, as we mentioned, that jumps out from Miguel Castro is the base on balls. And then what about 64 innings, 39 walks? Hits way below innings pitched. And there's another one. Lead off walk. Seventh walk allowed by Oriole pitching in this game, five yeah. by the starter. The lead off base runner for Texas in the seventh inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. So that puts a man off for the home run threat, Joey Gallo. A single in the second inning drove in a run. Well placed fastball. And the other thing, and the reason that Castro's usually hard to hit is because he changes speeds with his fastball, not on purpose. You know, again, if the windup's good, he'll probably be in the upper 90s. And if it's a little bit, you know, opens the lake too soon, it slows down. There's a slide step, which is fine when guys are trying to steal, but I don't think they're going to be running here down by four. Foul behind Steve Bouchel. No getting what about six seven? Seems like it's six eight because he's so skinny. Yeah, that's a pretty good windup. Didn't swing his leg there. And then right there. Quickly, everybody yell and get over, get over, but the ball's foul. Come a long way. 23. Great acquisition. Sure was. Out of the uh, Colorado Rockies. We saw him early on when he's actually closed at what age 19? Yeah, with the Blue Jays. In fact, he was one of the players when Toronto made the trade for Troy Tulowitzki that the Rockies insisted be included in the trade. They eventually would give up on him and deal it to the yeah, Orioles. He had hurt his shoulder. And yeah, I, actually, they kept uh, Miguel and Roberto Asuna uh, on the ball club. Asuna would stay and be the closer. 
Another changeup. So I don't want to be going into these counts. I, mean, I don't know if the mindset's by a younger pitcher, but when you're a veteran pitcher, you you hate three and two counts, especially with a four-run lead, because then you you know you don't want to walk anybody because that's not the way you're supposed to pitch. And number two, that means you usually have to a little bit more of the plate, and that gets you in trouble with somebody like Gallo. And the three two is popped up but that'll be back in the crowd. And Castro about to make a seventh pitch here to Joey Gallup. Orioles still need to get nine outs to win this game. And he yeah. got him. Wow. <laughs> now that might have been a changeup, right? It was. You know, 90, wow. and, but it's different than his fastball. And it ends up in the middle of the plate, but just the speed. You know, a little bit of movement, a little left to right, almost like a screwball. And like we said, that's his best secondary pitch. And he'll throw it at any time. That's a pretty gutsy pitch. So Paul Fry got the pitch last night. Fry gets in all three left handers in the bullpen will have pitched in this game. So left handed heavy lineup today for Texas. Ball one to Chirinos. You know, well you got Profar, what a uh, switch hitter. And, you know, Beltry getting the day off, otherwise he'd be in the lineup. Profar probably is also. Well off the plate outside for ball two. You see the shift on PR shading up the middle. You would have to cover the bag on a double play. And Mancini holding the bag at first on Jerickson Profar. Strike on the inside corner, borderline pitch. Carlson, who has the plate today, is the crew chief of this crew. So instead of three and zero, as Chirinos thought, it's two and one. In the outside corner. So he throws. Two fastballs badly off the zone and then back to back perfect pitches. Well, but that's the learning process. So why did you do that? And if you the more you pitch, the usually have a better field. The, the quicker you can find that field and get in touch with it, the, you can make some adjustments. And that's what he did. You swing your leg, you go left. If your lines are to home plate, see he was leaning back there, so you knew that pitch was going to go left. It's almost automatic. I might know that because was out there and I used to do that but he you know again if he, if he stays kind of comfortable and doesn't swing the leg it's a lot easier to throw the ball to the plate and he's not throwing the ball especially in this count anywhere but in the middle of the plate and hope it moves now it could be a changeup but again I mean in the middle of the plate movement and he got him and there's 96 96 mile an hour fastball so back to back K's and two down you know, three and two he is not aiming for the corner. Let the ball naturally move. When you stay behind it. It has that movement and has the good velocity. And get yourself an out. And here is Ronald Guzman. He has walked. He has struck out twice, so he has yet to put the ball in play. Guzman has seen Miguel just once and he had a home run against him. Perfect pinch of the knees. Quickly nothing in two on Ronald Guzman. So 
See the shift on against Guzman. And he struck him out. So Castro, after that leadoff walk, strikes out three consecutive batters. He gets Guzman to end the Texas seventh. Day off, and another pitcher comes on for Texas. Jim here is left hander Jeffrey Springs. Well, you know, I was looking at the uh, Dallas paper yesterday, and you see 888. Well, that's what Jeffrey Springs, he was the 888th pick, 30th rounder, signed for $1,000. Not Davey Leonard with a 20% discount on a pair of spikes, but a thousand bucks out of Appalachian State. And of their 2015 draft class, first number, first guy to the big leagues. And apparently, you know, I don't know, we'll see what his fastball is, but known for uh, striking out a lot of guys, 98 and 56 and two thirds, double A and triple A with a great changeup. So, you, you know, you're struggling. You talked about the release. The reliever's not that bad at what, eighth? Certainly, you can always help your pitching and uh, you know, get to see him for the first time. Mancini will lead off, Nunez and Rickard will follow. Springs in just his second big league appearance. That's a nice story. 25 years old, finally makes it to the big leagues. And there's the changeup, gets the high strike. So, what do they say about lefties? If you're breathing and you can get lefties <laughs> out, you're going to pitch in the big leagues. Pete Rose said that. There's the another changeup, gets a out on his front foot. And Mancini retired one away here in the Oriole Leaf. And Profar's had a busy uh, afternoon down at third. Done a good job. Well, he ended last night's game uh, with a rocket. Dove to his left for the final out and a three to one Ranger win. There have been eight balls hit his way and he's handled all of them. Including getting Beckham on that bang bang play on the sack bunt in the first inning. Not the Nunez. He has a two hit game. It was gunned down by Calhoun because of a quick tag by Odor. He can stretch the single into a double in the sixth inning. So he is now hitting six straight games. Now with four multi-hit games since joining the Orioles. He made his debut for the Orioles the first game following the All-Star break in Toronto. And he'll always have that trivia question attached to him. Who replaced Manny Machado with the Orioles? It was Nunez who was called up to take Manny's roster spot. Popped it up. Guzman at first base. And squeeze it for the out, two down. Oh. 
Usman looks like a, a first baseman. He's got all the mannerisms, lefty, tall, good stretch. Wealthy. <laughs> He's got three and a half million dollars to sign out of the Dominican Republic. Well, that was like 2011. The Rangers spent 12 million dollars in the next year. Mazar signed for almost five. And a fly ball to right. And Rickard is retired. How about that? Jeffrey Springs, his second big league appearance, a three up, three down eight. Nine five lead. Orioles have scored in five innings, and there's our, our fan out there near the bullpen. He's still waiting for a home run. He, he's got to move the left field. Either, maybe either, maybe yeah. Adam will throw him a baseball. Well, either that, yeah, he's probably waiting for that. And I wouldn't bet against it. Yeah, right there, clapping his hands. Now, maybe Alan Mills. Let's see. Come on, Adam. Come on, there's your guy. Meanwhile, Paul Fry is coming in the pitch for the Orioles. And he's done a nice job. Did a solo home run last night. And throws it into the bullpen. And uh, Paul Fry did a home run to Ord Odor. And but again, doesn't walk a lot of guys. You know, actually, lefties hit him better than righties. Calhoun who'll lead off doesn't play very much against lefties. So this is a guy you want to get out. Kind of one of those must guys. Well, Fry is getting that valuable experience, Jim, that you always talk about. And he's been getting in a lot of games. This is his eighth appearance since the All-Star break. Well, and also it's back to back games. Yep. So you know, funny Evans. We've seen that so pretty routine as long as you can see it. <laughs> see the sun against his glasses. Oh, there? Wow. I mean. But I think for I mean that's one of the things that you know I, my first year when I was 19 I pitched out the bullpen of course I didn't really know much but you could you know you learn and you sit around there and you talk to the guys okay so how do you handle the you know two days in a row some guys pitch as it turns out three times and you don't try to throw any harder with your body. You just try to speed up your arm so your mechanics stay good. And he's got good mechanics. He can throw strikes. If he walks you, that's a little bit out of character. Yeah, just three in his appearances. Yeah, that young Oriole fan out there. He's got a yeah, he's got a Google Alan Mills, who's the Oriole bullpen <laughs> catch, and say, you know, hey, my daddy told me about you back in 1997. Come on, Millsy, give him a baseball. Allen, fantastic guy. Left you get on his bad side. Ooh, I didn't know that about him. <laughs> like you were a hitter. <laughs> we didn't quite have. Well, close. He had the Dave Stewart. Remember Dave Stewart? 
Can oh, you give yeah. you the stare? He had the scowl. Uh, yeah. The hat down. Mm -hmm. well, Strawberry knows all about that. And it's foul down the line. It's kind of ironic that Alan Mills in his playing days uh, that scowl because he's now the nicest. Well, he always has been the nicest guy you're ever going to meet, but he's always smiling. Saw him in the lobby this morning before checking out of the hotel. How you doing, Jim? Big smile. He's waiting for his fellow coaches to come on out to the park. Two and two on Robinson. A little bit high, ball three. And you hate to go three and two only because we know this kid can swing the bat on fastballs. And when he's gotten them, he's, I mean, he's blistered it. One for a double, one for a nice play by uh, Villar. There's ball four. So you walk a young guy, and now you have the, the guy that goes up there to, to really hit until you walk him, because he's got as got a good eye as anybody on, on this ball club. You know, in a way, the Orioles will be fortunate if they hold on and win this game because that is the eighth walk. Yeah. And as hot as this team has been, you put that many extra runners on. Well, well, luckily you got the other next the other home run by Trumbo. But what it does, it opens up holes. So now, if you're Mancini, you're going to play on the bag, or even if you play a step off, that you have that big hole and a very fast infield into right. And Suchu swings through a fastball. He was one of those guys, you know, 289 against righties with 17 of his 19 home runs. Michael Gibbons getting loose. Hangs in there against lefties, hits around 250 with two home runs. Michael came in clean inning last night with a couple of strikeouts. This is the second time since Fry joined the Orioles that he's pitching in back to back games. Pitched at home against the Phillies in that makeup game on the 12th and then got into a game against Texas, first game in that three game series. And the Orioles will they'll document that. I mean, the Bucks certainly knows guys from when they pitch back to back. Same with uh, Roger McDowell and Alan Mills. But this is why you find out can a guy pitch two nights or two days in a row or a night in a day? It's not even 24 hours. Right. So some guys with maybe a little bit more arm strength, he throws pretty, pretty good. 91, 92, can pop the ball a little bit, but can he do it in back-to-back -back days? And that's why Buck's going right there. You know, hey, you know, we're finding these things out, and that's what the last six, seven weeks are, are about. Not everybody can be Darren O'Day. You know, you can go out there what three days in a row, you never know the difference. Four pitch walk. The five pitch walk, excuse me. And we talked to how these are critical outs because now you get into the heart of the lineup. Still need five more outs, and as Jim pointed out, against this Texas team, a four run lead is nothing. Well, this park, I mean, it's the yeah. whole thing. The way they're swinging the bat, the park, great offensive uh, place to hit. They also match up. You got to Michael Gibbons, who much better against right-handed hitters. Yet you got a bunch of lefties coming up, as you mentioned last inning. You used, this is your last lefty. And it, I think I think if you're Buck, that ball gets by win because he bounces it. You can see not a lot of arm speed today, so he's he can't command his stuff. And Roger McDowell's going to come out. And, uh, and fall way out in front of the plate. And couldn't keep it in front of him. Good news is he got at least one out at the fly right. ball to Calhoun. You know, the last two hitters, it looks like he is fatigued. Yeah. It's a very hot day. It was 95 at first pitch, probably a little higher now. Yeah, but I, yeah, as you know, that's not why he's fatigued. It's just because last night, you know, came in, pitched well, other than the or do, or the door home run. 
97 now and on the field it might be even hotter. Well, this will likely be his last batter regardless because the right hander Andrews is on deck. There's a bouncer to first the rumble score but that's a big out two down. Crossing the plate is Robinson to make it 9 6. Yeah, and here comes Buck. So, whatever Roger McDowell, the Royal pitching coach, says, it works. Throw a strike, quality strike, he does. It's a tough out to, to bounce to first. So, Fry leaves, Michael Givens comes on, one on, two out in the eighth. Thirteen pitches, one uh, one inning of work, no hits, a couple of strikeouts. So again, the numbers not good. Zero uh, and five June. You can see righties, the lefty-handed number came down dramatically because he got him out last night. Fully capable about with his stuff to get anybody out. So unlucky, walks her up. Um, you know, not a bad job. Anytime you're around you know, over seventy-five percent of inherited runners. So right here, looking for outs. As you mentioned, the Orioles need four more of them. They now have a nine to six lead. And Elvis Andrews, a tough customer, he tripled and scored in the first and drove in a run with an RBI ground out in the second. So he is one for four. And of course, with Zach Britton traded and Brad Brock traded, here is the bullpen and the save opportunities in their careers. And Castro, as Jim mentioned, the four saves. He was with the Blue Jays for a while as their closer. Michael Givens has just one, and that is this year. Pop them up. That is playable for Rickard. And Michael Givens gets the job done. So Texas gets a run, but they strand one. We are through eight. He goes with a three run lead.
earlier in the game. Let's get a look at our four drive of the game. This was in the second inning. Well, Orioles up one nothing, then down two to one, and then up four to two on this swing. Uh, into the long way. Two one fastball off of uh, Hutchinson. Hurry to your local Ford dealers for great savings on cars, trucks, and SUVs. So wins with a home run, a three run shot. He had three RBIs coming in. And three on that one swing and his family's here from California so that's nice there they are there's his dad on the left there mom in the Orioles jersey and that's his sister talking with her hands as I do every once in a while Italian. and a base hit for wins he has a two hit game so the Orioles can try to get that run back now with a lead off single well you get to see Jeffrey Springs who I uh, mean like they said uh, 30th round 880th pick but you know last year he got to start or at least start 17 times out of 31 appearances and did pretty well 146 strikeouts 112 innings and then you say OK can he throw strikes which he can and can he get lefties out to be determined and 91 is you know a couple miles per hour below the league average but that's it's factoring in all the guys that come out of the bullpen throwing 96 97. So can you get lefties out if you're going to be a left handed hitting specialist and will that change up play against righties. Double play ball. Odor. Andrews. Guzman. Yeah. Taylor made. All you have to do is catch it which Odor does and then all you have to do is to get to the veteran Andrews who's a veteran at 29. Right there. And then he can get it to him early clears the runner easy double play one pitch two outs. Andrew sure does have a good time playing baseball. He's always smiling. Well, also, well, who's his, who's his buddy all these years? Adrian Beltre. Yeah. And what does he do? He smiles. That's right. And he's for a many, number of reasons. He hits home runs. He going to the Hall of Fame. Three thousand base hits. Yeah. Closes it in on uh, what, 500 home runs. Well, that's why you need veteran players. Still look back at when the Orioles went out and uh, they got Nelson Cruz. Eight million dollars leaves the league, and and that's the kind of player that Nelly was, and not very proactive in trying to sign him early on. And then he went with the Mariners, and still having a good year. He's got a four RBI game today. Oh, home for Cruz. There's a strike on the corner. Well, I just, you know, I think the great thing about playing the game is you get to, especially if you're Beltre, who's 39, you've been around, you get to see other players when you're young and you come up. You know, which guy treats people a certain way, who has fun, who's not, who's moody, who's not. And then you decide, who do I want to emulate? So for young players, you know, and Andrews came up and Beltre was over here, or, you know, came over, I want to be him. Beltre doesn't mind teaching because he carries himself as a pro and they see that and they see his enthusiasm. And I don't think you get all those hits. He's all get a 3000 hit here last year. If you don't do the work and put it in. I mean I remember you know we saw him with Seattle after he had had that big year with the Dodgers and he gets a contract up there but I I actually thought the year that he spent in Boston looked like all of a sudden different hitter. He, could, he learned how to hit, hit the use right field, even though you had the green monster. They back him down on strikes on a real good changeup. So we head to the bottom of the ninth. The O's are three outs away from a win. Gibbons back to work.
players with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Beautiful view of Globe Life Park. That they will replace in a couple of years. Globe Life Field. Danny Valencia saying, well, I can close for you, Skip. No. No, but Gibbons has a chance to get his first save. Right? Second save. Well, more dramatic. First. <laughs> yeah. First one post Britain Brock. Oh, I talked about it last night. I told him, go in there, tell him. I want to be the closer. There's a strike. And my point is exactly what he's going through now. I said, a lot of times, there will always be three run leads, but it, it will usually be clean innings. And the only time they become less cleanly is when you walk people or get them on. So a lot easier than being a setup guy. There's the corner. His other save was May the 12th against Tampa Bay in game one of that doubleheader. And he went an inning and two thirds scoreless there. He needs an inning and a third here for the save. One and two. Gallo is on deck, and then Chirinos. They do have that big bat on the bench if they want to pinch hit Beltre. Lined, it hangs up. Peterson in on it, and he's there for the catch. One yeah, down. he gets to him so quickly, not hit particularly hard. Play him as you should. Shallow in the off field. So Profar is finally retired. He was on base four times. Three walks and a base hit. Well, you could see him complain on the two strike pitch because, again, he's hitting. He, well, you know, he wants to get strikes. If that ball's a ball, it's 2 1. He said it's 1 and 2, so. These guys are seeing the ball well. I mean, even if they end up losing this game, they still put six on the board. Yep. And the Orioles lost the first game when they put eight on the board on Thursday night. Lost that game on Thursday, 17 to 8. Gallo has an RBI on a single. Buck Showalter has resisted all attempts by the beat riders to name a closer. Now tip. Well, he's the obvious choice. Right. right. Or in Buck's word, you know, classic case of the obvious. But it's up to him, and that was my point let, on let a couple ask, of occasions. Let me ask you this: Is is there any more or less pressure on Michael Gibbons if he is in fact named the closer? I mean, he still has to get the final three outs, right? It really doesn't matter what we think, and he don't know. But Buck says, you know, I'll let him close. Today's a perfect example. I apparently he's going to let him close when he closes. But I told him, I said, you know, you got to do is pitch well, and you will be the closer. Right. Exactly. Because and, he, and I also said, listen, if it's if it's in your head, that's your problem, but it's not about your stuff. And there you go. I mean, he's got a great arm. He's got three pitches. Does he have always had command of them? Oh, but, and when he makes his pitches, it doesn't matter if you're right hand or left hand, or you go up there with two bats. He can get you out. And my final salvo of thoughts yesterday was, what an opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because he's under control, so they can build around him. Yeah, and then my other thing was, hey, I just sat at a table with a guy, Trevor Hoffman, who got in the Hall of Fame, that was also a converted infielder. And he had over 600 saves. Well, no one in baseball the last two years had more wins than Michael Givens. Having a tough year this year, but. Well, it's also not a great club to play for. I mean, you look at his record and you go, oh, well, you know, 18 and 3 coming into this this year on a club that played better until September of last year. This year, it's tough to win a lot of games, whether you pitch well or not, but certainly could get better. Popped up, Mancini back. 
And he's got it and the Orioles win it. So the birds salvage the finale of this four game series as they came back twice after the Rangers got the lead and they win it by a final of nine six and in the post Britain Brock era Michael Gibbons gets his first save. Well we hope you can join us on Tuesday a day off tomorrow the birds will open up a three game series at the trop against the Rays. Our coverage on Masson 2 will begin at 630 with those extra presented by Ford and then game coverage at seven o'clock. Now for Jim Palmer and our entire hardworking crew, Jim Hunter saying so long from Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Once again, our final score, the Orioles 9.